Okay, we are live on YouTube. All right. So welcome to the afternoon session of the August 9th, 2022 public hearing, public meeting of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. We will resume this afternoon with public hearing item number four. We um, This meeting is being held via Zoom and live streamed on our YouTube channel. And if you are planning to testify on any items this afternoon, uh, and look to the agenda for the estimated time. Please note that we are about an hour behind schedule, but we uh, hopefully will catch up. Um, so you may want to watch the YouTube live stream just to see where we are so you know when to join the meeting for the item you'd like to testify on. So with that, I will turn it over to our Director of Preservation, Corey Harala, to take us through the afternoon agendas. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Uh, and as stated, we'll start with public hearing item number four. It's LPC 23-00203, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 672, lot one. 601 West 26th Street, the Starrett Lehigh building in the West, also in the West, uh, sorry, it's an individual landmark also in the West Chelsea Historic District. This is an international style warehouse building with Art Deco style details resigned designed by Russell G. and Walter M. Corey and Yasuo Matsui and Purdy and Henderson and built in 1930 to 31. And the application is to construct rooftop additions, install a pergola, marquee and signage and replace ground floor infill. All right, and I'll just note for the record that Commissioner Goldblum is recused on this item and is not in this present for this meeting. Uh, the uh, applicants have joined the hearing. Um, if you could just please click on the screen to advance the slides and uh, state your names for the record and you may begin. Thank you. So I'm, I'm Alessandro Mascia with Studios Architecture and we also have a uh, word. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. Ward Dennis with Higgins, Quays, Barth and Partners. Uh, Alessandro and I will uh, be giving the presentation. Uh, I'll kick off with a brief overview. Uh, if you can go next slide, please, Alessandro. Um, Corey already gave the details of where the building is, individual landmark, and within the West Chelsea Historic District, uh, built 1930-31, uh, Starrett Lehigh building. It does occupy the full block from 12th Avenue to 11th Avenue, 26 to 27 streets. Uh, next, please. Uh, these are two historic views. Uh, from the west side, uh, what's now Hudson River Park, showing uh, fairly iconic views of the building. Uh, it's uh, very notable for its uh, place within the history of modern architecture, uh, certainly distinguished by its very strong horizontal lines, particularly uh, at the western area that we're looking at here, that lower roof. Uh, which is the 10th floor roof that is part of our application before you here today. Um, the building was constructed as a warehouse and industrial building uh, serving uh, uh, Lehigh Railroad um, and is now used for commercial offices and, uh, and similar uses. Um, next, please. So our application does include two primary areas of work. The first, as I mentioned, is at the 10th floor roof, uh, which is at the west side of the building uh, facing onto 12th Avenue. We also have some storefront modifications on 12th Avenue and on 27th Street and, a, and proposed marquees in both locations. Uh, these, the work at the base of the building is outside what is uh, already approved under the storefront master plan. Next, please. Uh, this is just a historic aerial view on the left and an existing aerial view on the right showing that 10th floor roof. You'll note that there is a raised clear story in the middle of the roof, uh, which is historic as well as a bulkhead uh, to the left or west of that clear story, which is also a historic element. Uh, the area of roof at the right in the right hand image is where uh, we are proposing work as well as on top of the clear story. And if you go next, please. Uh, so the roof is currently leased to individual tenants and RXR, the owner of the property, uh, proposes to make the south portion of the roof an, uh, an amenity space for all tenants of the building uh, with some public access at times to be determined. 
this is all uh, part of making uh, the building itself a more desirable place for office workers uh, and is very consistent with changes that we are seeing at many other buildings of, of the scale um, as, as people are working to make uh, office spaces more open to the outdoors and, and amenities more open to all tenants within the buildings. Uh, shown in purple are proposed trellises. These are open air structures at the roof and at the clear story. Uh, in blue at the left, you can see that we're proposing to enlarge uh, one of the, uh, the existing uh, bulkhead and we are proposing a new bulkhead extension at the far right in blue, uh, which is to bring an existing stair up to uh, the clear story roof. Uh, the bulkhead enlargement at the left is to bring the elevator up one additional floor, currently stops at nine and will go to 10, which is the main roof level. Um, you can also see in orange uh, uh, raised uh, railings. These will be, uh, these are safety railings. These are glass railings with a dark metal cap. Um, I will ask Alessandra now to walk you through the details of what we're proposing on the roof, and then I'll come back to finish the rest of the presentation. Sure. Good afternoon again. So yeah, this uh, axonometric view gives you a bit of an overview. Um, the, the lower level uh, of the activation, which is the 10th floor roof, obviously also uh, includes some uh, landscaping and the introduction of some uh, planting. The, uh, the clear story portion, which would be somewhat equivalent of the 11th floor elevation, also has some landscape elements uh, as part of the uh, proposed uh, plan to activate all these areas. And then uh, just so we're going to clarify the extension of the bulkheads, uh, both the elevator bulkhead to, to uh, establish a 10th uh, floor, a stop, an elevator stop on the 10th floor, and the uh, addition to the north of it um, uh, have to do with uh, extending the egress stairs, uh, same as the bulkhead extension on the east side of the Claire story, which of course all conditions, both, both are, you know, condition dictated by the desire to activate, to bring population to the clear story roof and provide um, means of egress from that area. Uh, one element that we will also look uh, separately in the package has to do with the uh, 12th, floor, 12th Avenue, I'm sorry, um, storefront activation, which is also connected to um, creating a dedicated a lobby for direct access from the street of the um, amenity, uh, outdoor amenity here. Sorry, skipped. So this is essentially just a recap of the existing conditions on the left. Uh, the roof is currently, um, it has some minor, let's say, activation, some uh, small parts that are dedicated to uh, specific tenants within the building. In the uh, proposed planning, the entirety of the clear story roof and the 10th floor south portion become amenity for the use of the uh, building tenants, uh, uh, all the building tenants, and some of these uh, specifically, you know, tenant dedicated uh, terrace portions are being relocated to the north side. The north side is just going to uh, undergo a uh, roof replacement uh, and is not really part of this application. So these are a couple of images of the existing conditions. So we're in this view on the left, we are there immediately north of the clear story, looking back at the um, upper stack of the building. And then the, um, the picture on the right uh, is taken from the south side. So you can uh, see the current you know, activation of the roof for the, for the tenant. Uh, the tenants uh, currently have some raised decks um, uh, that they use. These are, um, so this is a corner of the clear story, um, just to uh, give you a visual of what the architectural, you know, design quality and, and material quality of these volumes is today. It's simple masonry construction windows. There are in the style of the, let's say, of the ribbon windows um, of the of the main building, although they appear more to be like a punched punched opening, a series of punched opening. And then the elevator bulkhead that you see here is simple masonry construction with a stucco finish and a metal, metal coping at the top. So the proposed um, activation of the roof, 10th floor uh, roof and clear story uh, is described here in its entirety. Uh, so imagining to, you know, 
experience it from the inside of the building. It's accessed from the east side, so from the 10th floor interior. Um, there are some trellises, some, some uh, lightweight structure meant to provide shading. Uh, the articulation of the floor is such that uh, we go from a lower elevation coming out of the uh, 10th floor roof to uh, a more extensive uh, uh, volume that is uh, serving the purpose of uh, creating enough depth to for the tree planting so we have a certain articulation that we'll take a, another look in in detail section uh, there is a generous portion on the north side of the south portion of the roof that is left uh, open uh, specifically with the desire to uh, limit the impact of uh, natural light coming through the windows of the clear story uh, which then uh, provides uh, yeah, natural light to the tenants on the ninth floor um, of the building um, we um, the clear story itself again as we said is going to be accessed the uh, uh, convenience stairs that are being added one here on the west side to um, adjacent to the existing uh, stair bulkhead and one is proposed here on the um, on the southeast corner uh, running along the south wall of the of the clear story um, the clear story is gonna get uh, you know a raised roof with pavers uh, landscaping around the perimeter uh, and uh, uh, trellis for both the the areas we are basically pulling back from the edge of the existing parapet to create a bit of a um, call it a service aisle or is a bit of a uh, an area of respect so that we can um, pull in all the new landscaping um, because in order to accommodate occupancy on these floors we have to um, uh, in, implement some structural work so the, the design includes top reinforcement of the slab let me just jump quickly to some of the section that very I'll, I'll go back to the uh, specific sections but here we can uh, you can see a section cutting across the 10th floor roof and clear story and so you can start to appreciate the uh, 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 the top reinforcement of the slab on 10th floor, uh, the deeper bed for the tree planting, and again, the support to the rest of the landscaping. Uh, for the clear story, there is a similar approach to providing structural capacity to support the occupant load and a, a slightly different way of um, uh, landscaping the, um, the space to minimize uh, the impact on the view from, the, from afar. In, I'm just going back to our elevation. We are generally then introducing, uh, a, a, again, a new roof elevation given the structural reinforcement they're proposing. Therefore, we're gonna have a new guardrails that um, will you know, be designed to be up to code at 42 inches from the uh, finished floor. And the proposed trellises that you see here, we're trying to keep them uh, uh, fairly low. So we are only um, building them up to be about eight foot eight from the elevation of the new uh, proposed floor. Both This is both for the 10th floor uh, roof and for the clear story roof. The extension of the bulkhead on the west side, which again is, is triggered by the desire to uh, create an elevator stop on the 10th floor is fairly limited because the existing bulkhead um, uh, is pretty tall as it is. So in uh, adding this one stop, uh, but changing to a different um, uh, system for the elevator uh, allows us to keep that uh, extension um, uh, pretty limited. And of course, the, um, the volume extension will be um, detailed to be in kind with the existing construction. This elevation that is established here is also then going to be maintained for the, or is going to be used also to uh, determine the elevation of the stair extension on the east side. Same concept there. However, the stair enclosure is going to be uh, designed to have the same architectural quality and, and details of the existing volumes. So I just want to quickly move to the more specific details. This is, oh, sorry. The, uh, <laughs> This is a little bit of a detail that explains how on the west side, the existing elevator bulkhead and the existing um, stair, of uh, egress stairs, are going to get that extension of the stair on the north side, which will then provide a means of egress from the clear story level. So looking at these details a little bit more closely, uh, this is a section taken on the south side at the point where our uh, raised uh, elevation um, 
corresponds to where we have uh, trellises and, and planting, but the section doesn't cut through the planting bed per se. It's just to identify, to, to make you visualize the three foot six uh, aisle that is created immediately in, in board of the parapet. And so the, the new building, the new roof construction and roof assembly will be entirely in board of that line by three foot six. Um, the new uh, proposed elevation sits about in line with the existing parapet, and this will put the new uh, proposed railing about three foot six or 42 inches above that line. Uh, a similar section, but now taken through the uh, uh, tree planting bed uh, uh, and also through the proposed trellis, uh, describes how this all, you know, comes together. At a different location, immediately outside of the um, uh, proposed door, uh, access door from the interior to the 10th floor, we are still at a lower elevation. So the we maintain a constant width for that service aisle in board of the parapet, but the uh, the proposed assembly is much more limited, and therefore the entire the the top of the railing uh, is at a lower elevation than the one proposed um, for this this the middle portion of the south roof. And in a somewhat similar fashion, we're also creating that respect uh, aisle uh, adjacent to the south side of the clear story. So this section now uh, yeah, visualizes uh, the lower planting bed for, this is more of a, a lawn bedding for, uh, for this condition up here. Mm -hmm. This section here now looks at the clear story condition where again, that's the, the uh, structural reinforcement detail are about the same um, but uh, the the planting for the for the trees is modeled in such a way that uh, while we were introducing a guardrail to create this uh, uh, transit aisle on the south side we then uh, create more separation from that um, space to the to the portion of the floor that is occupied this is a view uh, taken as you would be coming out of the uh, 10th floor interior, looking uh, roughly west uh, across the river. So the overhead uh, structure, um, you know, uh, provides shading at the point of uh, transitioning from the interior to the exterior. And then further down, we see the trellises that elongate east and west um, on the further on the south side of the of the plan. And as per conversations uh, with the design team, with the staff, the, the request is to uh, adopt a glass railing to you know, limit obviously the, imp the visual impact, but there was a request also to adopt a, a black cap in uh, to keep in kind with some of the existing details on the uh, building uh, window and uh, along the rest of the facade. So where the, I think you wanna take it back from here. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, we did look in terms of precedent. Uh, this is obviously a, a very large building, industrial building. Uh, we are adding plantings to the roof of the building, and we have put together a few examples of uh, such interventions. Uh, the first two approved by the commission. This is the building immediately to the north of us. In fact, in the left-hand image, you can see stare at Lehigh behind. And the point here is not so much the rooftop addition, but rather the way that plantings are integrated into the landscaping of the roof and become an amenity. And next, please. Uh, and we see similar things happening at the roof of uh, the Empire Stores building in Brooklyn. Again, another very large, robust industrial building uh, where it is appropriate to have uh, not only visible additions and what we're proposing is far less visible than this, but also to have plantings and the like. Uh, and next, and then of course, um, you know, the, the great example nearby us, which is not a landmark, but the High Line itself, uh, which brings in landscaping into uh, the industrial character of the West Side over here. And this is obviously very proximate to our, uh, to our project as well. Next, please. Uh, one other area of work at the roof, uh, we are proposing to remove a couple sections of windows at this west wall of the roof in order to install a roll down gate. Uh, we will also be relocating that single swing door that you see at the left and installing a, 
uh, replacement window in its place. All of these windows are replacements done about seven or eight years ago, uh, approved by this commission. Uh, so we are not removing any historic fabric in order to create this rolled down cape. If you go next, please. Uh, and then this is the existing elevation and next. Uh, and then the proposed the roll down gate will have the same module of Muntins and divided lights. Uh, it obviously will not have a vertical mullion, but it will have otherwise the, the divisions of the window. So in the down position, uh, it will be uh, less perceptible. This None of this is visible from the street. This is only something you would see if you were standing on the roof itself. Next, please. Uh, and then we do have details for how this roll down gate works. Next, please. Uh, and uh, cut sheet for that as well. Next. Uh, we have constructed a mock-up on the roof. This is a view looking down onto the mock-up. The clear story is at the center. And at the left is the south roof where we are proposing uh, the raised platform and trellises. Next, please. Uh, we have selected about uh, eight views where uh, there is visibility or not visibility, but uh, the more uh, prominent views. I will note that because of the placement of the building north of 12th Avenue, there is visibility of this roof uh, from as much as 12 blocks away to the south. Next, please. Uh, in each of these images, we have a mock-up view. Uh, the zoomed-in image is the left-hand large image. Uh, the more human eye uh, image is at the top right. Uh, and then next. And then we have done uh, uh, renderings on the mock-up views in order to show uh, the visibility of the trellises. We have outlined the, uh, the plantings, the trees, so that you can see uh, the permanent structures. Uh, in, in this case, we can see some of the uh, south trellises and a bit of the glass railing. Next, please. Uh, this is a view from uh, over 10 blocks away, so very far distant, particularly if you look at the top right photo, even zoomed in, uh, a bit hard to see. Next. Uh, from this angle, you can see uh, the trellises at the south side. You can also see the trellis at the clear story roof. Uh, this is really the, the point at which that uh, clear story trellis becomes visible from most angles. It is, it blends in with the other trellises or is not visible. Uh, I will note that in response to comments from Community Board 4, we have lowered this trellis uh, by about two and a half feet. Uh, as shown in this image. Next, please. Uh, closer in and from within Hudson River Park, uh, there, there is visibility uh, and you're closer into the building. You're still, you know, four or five blocks away at this point. Uh, next. Uh, so this is a rendered view of that where we are seeing the south trellises at the center. We can see uh, the slight, slight enlargement of the west bulkhead. Uh, again, that's going up by about two and a half feet. And we can see the glass railing. Uh, as Alessandro noted, uh, in response to comments from LPC staff, we have uh, introduced a very uh, hefty uh, black railing on top of the glass railing. We do think that the, the use of glass railings, which I know the commission uh, sometimes approves and sometimes does not. Uh, but we think that in the context of this building where those ribbon windows are so predominant, having a glass railing as opposed to a more cluttered metal railing is the right approach. And the top rail of that is uh, uh, designed to uh, fit in with the color of the windows themselves. Next, please. Uh, Again, from Hudson River Park, looking northeast at this point, you're starting to see some of the new construction behind the building to the north of the building. Next. Uh, the trellises now read much more as longer horizontal items. We're primarily seeing those two south, south trellises uh, and the bulkhead becomes uh, pretty minimally visible at this point. Uh, and you can see the horizontal uh, glass guardrail. Next, please. Uh, from the north, uh, you can see actually the construction of the terminal warehouse. Uh, next, please. 
there is uh, some visibility of the east bulkhead uh, at the left there, uh, but I will note that the dotted white line shows the uh, outline, the massing of terminal warehouse. So when that's completed, this uh, bulkhead will not be visible. You can see very faintly the extension of the west bulkhead on the right and a tiny bit of uh, the trellis, uh, but again, that would be blocked from uh, view by uh, Terminal Warehouse. Next, please. Uh, view from all the way west on Pier uh, 46 uh, at the sailing school there. The existing bulkhead is visible at this angle. Next, please. Uh, and you can see the enlargement of that as well as the construction of the new pieces below. You can see uh, at this point, the glass railing sort of reads as a very narrow strip uh, and the trellises are not visible from this angle. Next, please. Uh, a couple closer in views uh, from the north, uh, I'm sorry, from the south, looking northeast and next. Uh, and then from uh, the north, looking southeast, from these uh, closer in views, nothing is visible. Next, please. Uh, and then we did look at uh, this uh, point of view from the Southwest, uh, sort of mimicking the view of the of that iconic historic photo on the left. Um, interesting to note that in this view, the context of the building itself has radically changed. Not only do we have uh, uh, Hudson Yards rising up behind us in the background, which takes this building away from being exposed against the sky. But we also have the, the wonderful greening of Hudson River Park that has turned uh, what was a working waterfront on the left into a, a green public space. Next, please. Uh, and in that context on the right, we can see the mock-up view, uh, the trellises from this angle very much read as open and horizontal structures. Uh, the glass railing is very much a uh, secondary horizontal element on top of the building. Uh, from this angle, all of this is against the backdrop of Hudson Yards uh, and the greenery on the roof uh, uh, is in line with the greenery in the park. Next, please. Uh, and this is just mock-up and rendering side by each. Next, please. Uh, so at the base of the building, next. Uh, we have two areas of work, one on 27th Street at the top right, uh, where we are proposing a marquee and some modifications to one of the building entrances to create a bike entry. And then on the left, where we are proposing another small marquee uh, and some modifications to the master plan in line with what the commission has previously approved. Um, of course, the master plan uh, recalls that rendering on the left where uh, it is really working to reflect the fact that these were all large uh, open uh, garage bays or bays for railroad, uh, for, for rail cars. Uh, and that openness at the base of the building is certainly a feature of the master plan and something that we are continuing. Next, please. Uh, this is a pl overall plan of the building in the dark red on 26th Street and on 11th Avenue wrapping around to 27th Street are marquees that the commission has previously approved. Uh, we are proposing two smaller marquees, one on 27th and one on 12th Avenue. Uh, and then a slightly longer marquee on 27th Street uh, that's really intended to mark the north entrance of this building as uh, with the construction happening at Terminal Warehouse and Hudson Yards, 27th Street is more and more becoming an activated street. So uh, identifying the building and bringing people into the building from that north entrance is becoming more and more important. Next, please. Uh, so this is on 12th Avenue, highlighting the areas of work, uh, designation photo from 1986 on the right and historic photo from 1931 on the left. Next, please. And an existing condition photo, that entire bay uh, where that uh, red outline is, is currently a set of louvers for uh, a generator that sits behind. Um, we are proposing to take the left hand northernmost uh, section of those louvers and converting that into an entrance. 
uh, the area to the left of that, it was previously reviewed by the commission. Go ahead, next. Uh, and that is actually reflected in the current approval in the center here uh, with uh, the spandrel. The master plan originally envisioned full height uh, storefronts at these locations, uh, but given the height and the fact that there are some existing mezzanines beyond, the commission recently approved introduction of spandrels as shown at the uh, three left bays. And we are proposing to continue that in this single bay on the right, uh, as well as introducing a marquee above and uh, next. Uh, so this is just showing the same thing in plan in a little more detail, next. Uh, and some additional details, you can see uh, the section through the marquee, uh, number three on the, on the elevation at the left. Uh, otherwise, the infill windows uh, and doors are consistent with the master plan. And the spandrel that's shown there is consistent with your prior approval. Next, please. Uh, the canopy, as with all the other canopies on the building, will project out five feet. There will be strip lighting around the face of the canopy. Uh, the commission previously approved uh, lettering on the face of the building above this entrance, so we are not proposing any additional signage here. Next, please. Uh, and this is a rendering of that uh, proposed view, the new entry with a marquee in the center. Uh, everything to the left of it is as approved previously by the commission and the signage above uh, is also as approved previously by the commission. Next, please. And then on 27th Street, uh, we have this existing uh, condition uh, to the right of an area where we have the metal panels. Uh, this is all governed by a master plan. The area of the metal panels was previously approved by the commission. Next, please. Uh, this is a rendering of what we are proposing. We are proposing to add a canopy and a small uh, amount of signage by that uh, left entry at the metal panels. Uh, and we are proposing a new canopy with signage above uh, this entry in the center here. Uh, the other infill shown here is consistent with the master plan, except for uh, two sliding doors, which will become a bike entry for uh, tenants of the building, which we'll show in detail. Next. Uh, this is just an elevation showing uh, the proposed work. Next, please. Uh, and then a comparison of existing conditions, uh, current approvals and master plan and proposed work. Again, all the infill except for uh, the change to the sliding doors is consistent with the master plan uh, and we're not proposing any changes there. Uh, so the changes that we are proposing are the mark, the two marquees and two pieces of signage and the bike entry doors. Next. Uh, this is a detail at that metal panel. Uh, this is all you know, new infill uh, approved by the commission. The signage will attach by uh, uh, pin mounted to the metal panel. So nothing historic is being impacted. There's no uh, lighting on the marquee itself. There are some down lights under the canopy, uh, but nothing on the face. And the uh, pin mounted letters are not illuminated either. Next. Uh, and then this is a detail elevation at the right uh, where you see the bike entry. That is where the sliding doors are proposed. So that is a variation from the master plan. Uh, that is uh, uh, for bike entry. So for convenience, uh, if you have a bicycle and you struggled with the double doors as shown on the left here, uh, you know what that's like. So these will be automated doors that will open and allow people to get in and out with their bicycles easily. Uh, and then above we have the canopy and signage. Next, please. Uh, and details of the canopy and signage, all of these are consistent with uh, the prior approvals for other canopies on the building. There will be lighting on the fascia. Um, uh, the canopies project out five feet. Uh, go next, please. Uh, here are some, some additional details. Uh, showing how the signage is mounted. The signage will be internally illuminated as at the other elevations. Uh, the canopies are about uh, two feet, three inches tall and project out 
uh, five feet. Uh, and then uh, we do have some uh, additional details here as well. And I think this might be the last slide. Yes, there we go. So uh, welcome uh, your questions and comments. Uh, I think again, we've uh, intended the design of the rooftop to be in line with the horizontal reading of the building. Uh, we do have visibility, but there are some very long angles from which you do see this. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions? All right, I'm not seeing any questions at this time. So we'll move to public testimony. And if you're in the meeting and would like to testify in this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And we'll start with anyone who signed up in advance and get to everyone else. But whether or not you signed up in advance, please raise your hand so we can find you. And I will turn it over to our executive director, Lisa Kersavich, to take us through the testimony. Okay, thank you. Um, and we had one person sign up to speak and that is Jessica um, Chayet, Chayet, who I don't see with her hand raised. Um, so I will call the one hand that I see raised, uh, Carrie Keenan. Okay, Carrie, you've been brought in. You just need to unmute yourself and turn on your camera. So sorry about that. Um, and please state your name for the record. Yes. I'm Carrie Keenan. Um, I am here actually on behalf of Jessica Chait uh, as the co-chair of, of Community Board Four's Chelsea Land Use Committee. Um, Jessica had to step away because of the, the delay. Um, thanks for giving me the time to testify today. Um, on the recommendation of the Chelsea Land Use at our July 2022 meeting, Manhattan Community Board 4 voted to recommend denial of an application to LPC for rooftop landscaping activation and a new ground floor entry at 12th Avenue at the Stair at Lehigh Building. Community Board 4 recommends approval of modification to ground floor entrances on West 27th Street. Uh, regarding the activation of the 10th floor roof and clear story, According to the applicant, the proposed rooftop terrace would be a tenant-only amenity space. However, the applicant also stated that it would be used as an indoor-outdoor restaurant um, and therefore a public space, as well as for possible indoor-outdoor events and conferences. It's disingenuous to call the rooftop improvements a tenant-driven amenity. The applicant needs to clarify this issue, please. Uh, Community Board 4 finds that a number of proposed rooftop features will be visible from the street including pergolas, guardrails, trellises, landscaping features, and stair and bulkhead enlargements. These will detract from the original design of the building, the dominant flowing horizontality of the upper levels. A clear roof line was intended. The height of the trellis on the clear story would be over 11 feet. Thank you for taking it down because it was 13 feet above the existing roof. The, propose, the proposal suggests no intent to minimize this visibility. And in the case of the westernmost bulkhead, would increase its height by two feet, five inches, so patrons could more easily access this restaurant slash event space. Our app the applicant constructed a mock-up of the proposed rooftop terrace and bulkhead extensions. A review of this rooftop mock-up finds that the proposed construction would be clearly visible from both the north and the south. The mock-up can also be seen from the West Side Highway, the Hudson River Park, and Pier 64. This visibility would unacceptably detract from the building's originally intended fluid roof line. For these reasons, Community Board 4 recommends that LPC disapprove all the proposed visible elements. We also recommend that LCP disapprove the, modif the modification of three bays of existing ribbon windows to create a roll-up glazed door access to the roof. This proposed change would alter the original design intent for the building and most egregiously conflicts with the landmark architecture of the Stair at Lehigh building. This proposal is not restorative, but is intended to create easier access to the rooftop terrace. CB4 believes this, that the ribbon windows truly represent the historic fabric of the building and must be protected. Creating a garage door style entryway would completely alter this historic facade at the terrace level. Um, as to the 12th Avenue entrance, CB4 recommends that the LPC deny the proposed installation of a new building entrance and marquee on 12th Avenue. The existing elevator is used as a backup freight elevator and access as a loading dock. The proposed 12th Avenue entrance is for accessing the proposed 10th floor roof terrace and is therefore intended to bring the public to a tenant only space. 
it would alter the master plan from a designated storefront and add visible height at the 10th floor bulkhead extension. And as to the West 27th Street entrances, um, we applaud the applicants impro improving access to a bicycle storage area and CB4 recommends that LPC approve the proposed modification. Um, though Community Board 4 has and will continue continue to support reasonable continued alterations of the stair at Lehigh Building Master Plan, we recommend LPC deny proposals that negatively impact the skyline and visibly deviate from the original design intent. Our letter from April, April 2021 opposed additional elevations on the eastern end of the building to now ask for western side elevation of expansion would be chipping away at the historic fabric of this building. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Um, next, I see Megan Weatherby with your hand up. Okay. Thank you. I'm Megan Weatherby, the Executive Director of the Art Deco Society of New York. ASNI is pleased to support this application. Enhancing the expansive river-facing roof space is a terrific way to celebrate this remarkable building's character-defining setback for 21st century use. We found the sum of the proposed marquee, infill, and signage to be appropriate as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oops, sorry. Um, and I don't see any other hands raised. That concludes the testimony. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to turn back to the applicants and ask if you'd like to respond to the comments we've heard. Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, uh, I'd like to thank the Art Deco Society for their comments, which I obviously think are spot on, but uh, I think they, they get how this building works and how this building can handle uh, this kind of intervention. Uh, with regard to the community board's comments, uh, I know a lot of the discussion at the community board meeting and a lot of their comments were really focused on the use of the rooftop uh, as opposed to uh, the modifications and appropriateness of the visibility. Uh, as we said, this is intended as a tenant amenity for all tenants of the building. Uh, this is something that we are seeing at a lot of larger uh, office buildings and office complexes. We've seen it at Rockefeller Center. Uh, and, and many, many other places. Uh, and particularly uh, coming out of COVID, these kinds of outdoor spaces as amenities are very important uh, in making the buildings more desirable places to work. Uh, and what we're doing with the bike, uh, bike entry and everything else like that is consistent with that. Uh, we did reduce uh, the height of one of the trellises in response to uh, the community board's comments and also in seeing its visibility after first mocking it up. Uh, the elevator, uh, which they objected to the height of, we are raising by less than two and a half feet. And that, as I said, is to take the elevator, an existing elevator for, that stops at the ninth floor, bring it up to the 10th floor. Uh, we're not proposing to bring that elevator up to the clear story because that would require another 15 to 17 feet of height, which we don't think would be appropriate. So we do have a lift that is not visible from the street that will uh, bring people from the 10th floor up to the clear story roof. So, you know, we've obviously already made modifications and uh, anticipated some of the visibility and appropriateness. Uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the trellises are designed uh, as very horizontal elements, as is uh, the glass railing. I know, uh, again, sometimes the commission uh, does not like glass railings, but I think in, in this particular instance, it is uh, very specifically appropriate to this building. And we have introduced a, a much more solid rail on top of that to help uh, enhance the reading of that horizontality. Um, I'm, I guess, confused about the comments about the uh, roll up door on the west elevation. Uh, it's not visible from the street. We are not removing any historic fabric. Uh, if we at some point decided that that uh, roll up door was not working, uh, we would remove it and we would reinstall uh, the exact same windows that are there right now, which are 
um, and the really amazing replacement windows that we did on the building wide campaign about seven years ago. Uh, so I think that's everything unless I missed anything, Chair. I, I think you've covered the comments. Okay, commissioners, do we have any final questions? All right, not seeing any final questions. I am sending you all requests to unmute. Sorry. Um, um, okay, Commissioner Chapin, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. And Commissioner Lutfi, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. And as has been presented, there are sort of two areas of work, the rooftop area and then the street level areas. At the rooftop, we have extending an elevator bulkhead two and a half feet, a new elevator bulkhead, some convenience stairs, trellises and glass railings, um, also removing um, non-historic and non-visible windows to create a roll down door in the same configuration to provide access to this terrace. And then at the ground level, we have two entrances to be changed, the 12th Avenue entry um, with new infill that would match the master plan, except it would have a horizontal spandrel, similar to what we approved in the adjacent bays, and a new marquee. And then on 27th Street, new infill um, that would match the master plan with the exception of sliding doors in one bay, a new marquee and signage, um, and then other associated signage. So there's um, sort of two zones with a number of items within each of those zones. We can organize our comments that way. And uh, the, as was presented, the because there are long, very long views to this building, there is some visibility of the rooftop elements. Um, so Commissioner Chen, would you like to start this one? Sorry, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, starting with the ground floor on the 12th Avenue side, given our history of the past approval for the pattern, I have no problem with the 12th Avenue one. On the 27th uh, uh, Street side, I think obviously the marquee and the sliding doors are new. I will defer to the uh, rest of the commissioner to see if they have any comments. Um, uh, in terms of the uh, rooftop, I think that uh, I will ask them that as much as possible that uh, the elements that they remove be preserved if uh, the rest of the commission are deemed approval uh, appropriate uh, to remove the, uh, the uh, for the uh, low down gate. And, um, and I think the handrail issue is one of those that we always have this uh, perpetual uh, discussion about whether it should be glass, whether it should be uh, of another type. So those are my comments. Uh, I'd like to hear what the rest of the commissioners think. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Bland? Uh, I'll unmute, although there's noise in the background. I think it's okay now. Um, uh, yes, lots of little things here I, as I see them, um, and they add up to appropriate in my judgment uh, generally. Um, you know, I've stated many times, uh, unless it's really an egregious change of visibility, um, I never mind seeing evidence that rooftops are being used. And um, yes, it's visible, but mostly from a distance. And I don't think that interferes with my ability to appreciate this extraordinarily big uh, building. Um, with regard to the rails, um, I'm one who often suggests that um, strange as it may seem that a glass is actually more visible than a, a metal picket typical rail would be cause attention. But in this case, and I think Ward Dennis stated it accurately because of the ribbon windows throughout the building, uh, somehow this glass rail seems appropriate to me here where often it does not. And the changes on the street level, all of them seem um, um, to be in keeping with the uh, the uh, vernacular of the building itself and uh, in many cases similar to things that we've already approved on the building. So I think um, all in all, I can accept this um, as it is. 
Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lefe. Please just don't forget to unmute. Got it. Got it. Okay. So there are a lot of little things and overall, I think they work. Um, on the top, um, I really don't have a problem with the roll down gate. The, any changes to the bulkheads seem fine to me. Um, I happen to agree that I think the uh, the uh, the glass railing works with the windows, and I think that the uh, that metal top is just a nice seal to it. Um, I do think it would be good if the trellis could re be reduced in height. Um, I think that might be it on the top. And then on the bottom, a lot of the changes are consistent with uh, things that we have approved in the past. So uh, I'm not having a, a problem with uh, the, the changes on the 12th Avenue side in terms of signage and uh, same on 27th in terms of signage marquees doors, et cetera. I, I think that they um, I think that they all work and I think it's important to uh, make changes that enable people who bike, especially when you're that far west. <laughs> There's not a lot of mass transportation to get to the building uh, if they work there. Um, and that's it. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, <clears throat> um this is an interesting, I mean, the use of the, the roof as a park is beautiful. Um, the I interesting idea here is that planting is used as a camouflage to hide things. And I can buy that. I can accept the planting, kind of hiding the trellis, the height of the trellis. Um, and that's fine. Uh, the issue for me is the bulkhead. The, 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 um, the bulkhead from the ninth floor that didn't exist before and now it exists and it's very very visible and um, it looked like it was covered in stucco some light material to me and they should somehow make it background as best as they can um roll, up, roll down gate is fine the roll down gate is fine um uh, the guardrails I think without the cap is better in my personal opinion, because you think the, the edge condition doesn't do much for me, but that's my opinion. Um, and the, the stuff that's been approved before in the master plan, I can accept those because it's, it's been talked about and discussed. So my only issue is really the, the accepting the camouflage issue and accepting this ninth floor ah uh, there it is which really changes i mean it's one thing sticking up there but if it could be gray it could be some color some way, some way. okay changes the line okay great thank you commissioner gustafson yeah i, I really um don't have anything uh much to add the uh uh, that the previous commissioners haven't already said. I think it's uh, generally speaking appropriate as is. Um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Lutfi. If there's a possibility of, um, of reducing the height of the trellises, that, that would be appreciated. They could work on that detail, I think, with staff. Um, I would note, um, although uh, we very much always appreciate the comments of the community boards, um, it sounded like in this instance, it was their comments were driven largely by um, the use of the um, of the rooftop facilities. And, and just to be clear, that's not in our purview. So while we might agree or disagree, um, it's not for us to decide. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Chapin. Uh, yeah, um, I, uh, I, I think I agree with the changes on the ground that on the uh, storefront. Uh, I think those are acceptable. 
and reasonable. Um, I was sort of struggling with that glass rail issue because uh, it did seem very visible, but I also have somewhat the same opinion as Commissioner Bland that perhaps having it aligned somewhat in it with the ribbon windows, there's some sense of it aligning with those and sort of working for that reason. Um, the pergolas do seem to be very prominent. I, I think pergolas are fine, but I wonder if there isn't something that can be done to a little bit uh, lessen their visibility against the skyline, uh, either height or color or both. Uh, and I think that's my only real issue with this. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I think we actually um, have support for this um, conceptually. And if everyone's comfortable with it, we could ask them to work with the staff to explore ways to reduce the height of the trellis and the height and or visibility of the trellis and to also study the finish on the bulkhead to help it recede from view. So I think with those two conditions, we have enough to support this. Commissioner Chen, would you be comfortable making a motion with those two recommendations? Yes, sorry, I have a mute. Um, in the matter of LPC docket number 23-00203-601, uh, West 25th Street, uh, 26th Street, Star Lehigh City, an individual landmark uh, in the West Chelsea Historic District. The application is to construct rooftop additions, install a pergola, marquee and signage, and replace ground floor infill. Uh, noting the building is an individual landmark, as well as a building whose style scale materials and details among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the West Chelsea Historic District, that the work will not damage or eliminate any significant architectural features, that the proposed bulkhead extensions and trellises will be compliant, will be, will be simply designed with neutral finishes, and will be set back from the facade to help them remain a discreet presence, that the Extending existing stucco clad bulkheads, which are currently visible from public thoroughfares, will be in keeping with historic and previously approved simply designed rooftop accretions and will not overwhelm this large industrial building when seen from public thoroughfares. That the proposed open trellises will only be seen from the south and will follow the horizontality of the design of the building that the proposed multi-light roll-up do uh, door at the terrace will be in keeping with the historic configuration and finish of the windows throughout the building and will not be visible uh, from any public thoroughfare. That the proposed ground floor infill featuring single light display doors and side lights, simple framing and low metal bulkheads will match the infill previously approved infill uh, throughout the ground floor, that the operable sliding doors at the north facade will be set back from the facade and be in keeping with a variety of infill historic they found uh, throughout this building and which feature loading bays and garages. That the proposed infill at the 12th Avenue facade featuring single light doors and side lights, low metal bulkheads and a metal spandrel with glass transom above the spandrel will will match the infill previously approved at this facade in terms of placement, materials, design, details, and finish, thereby helping to maintain the uniformity of the ground floor infill at this facade. That the proposed marquee will stretch the previously approved marquee configurations in terms of material and design, that the cumulative effect of these installations will not overwhelm this large full block industrial building, that the proposed pin-mounted metal letters will be small in size and install a modern metal uh, cladding, and that the cumulative effect of the proposed and previously appro approved signage throughout the ground floor, including illuminated sign as select, as select marquees will not overwhelm the building. However, uh, the staff finds that the, um, uh, so remind, 
Yeah, we'll I recommend guess. yeah that they work with the staff to reduce the height of explore reducing the height of the trellises and to restudy the finish on the bulkhead to help it recede from view. As indicated by Chair Carroll. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Bland. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. He's recused. Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. With uh, eight in favor and none opposed, the motion okay. passes. Well, that's approved with the condition you continue to work on the, with the staff on those two Oops. components of the application. So thank you. And we'll move to the next thank item. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. The next item is public hearing item number five, LPC 22-07709. An application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1208, lot 137, 6 West 95th Street in the Upper West Side, Central Park West Historic District. This is a Renaissance Revival style row house with Churiguresque style elements designed by Horace Edgar Hartwell and built in 1893 to 94. And the application is to construct rear yard and rooftop additions, modify a masonry opening, install mechanical equipment, and raise parapets. Okay, we're just letting in the applicants. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, would it be okay to uh, uh, let Andrew Percival share the screen? It, it is so. I, I, um, this, the applicant um, who I have doing the slide control is Andrew. Yes. Hi, that's me. And you've joined. Okay. So you're not coming up in the remote. Uh, just give me a moment. There you are. Okay, you should now have control of the slides by just clicking on the screen and please remember to state your name for the record and begin. Um, I'm Andrew Percival from Span Architecture and thank you everybody for your, for your time this afternoon. Um, I will be presenting alongside Mary Derrix. Um, she will be kicking off the presentation and then when we get into the design kind of portion of it, I'll take over for a few slides before handing back to her to round things off. Um, um, thank you very much. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Mary Derrix, the preservation consultant for the project. Uh, we have in the Zoom also Peter uh, Pelsinski, Andrea Knox, and Vikram Reddy, who are available to ask, answer questions if uh, any arise that we need them for. Uh, next. This application is to construct rear yard and rooftop additions, raise the side parapet, lower the top floor rear window for a door, and add four new window openings at the east facade. Next. 6 West 95th is an 1893 to 1894 row house designed by architect Horace Edgar Hartwell. Originally, it was one of a row of three. Uh, now it's just two, along with the building next door, 8 West 95th. This is the house in 1940, and on the right is at the time of designation. Next. Um, here's the front facade and the east facade where the uh, windows are going. Next. Here's the building in context on the block. Next. This is the rear facade, which was extended under a 2017 landmarks permit. And on the right is the top floor. Next. Uh, this is the rear and the top floor facade of 8 West 95th, the adjacent row house. Next. Um, here's uh, the rear yard looking from the roof. Um, on the left, you can see the alley to 94th Street. That's the alley that was created when the 1920s apartment building was built um, next door. Um, because of this alley, you will see the rear, um, uh, the rear, uh, the, you'll, you'll see the addition from the rear. Um, next. Um, this is a view of uh, what it looks like on the on the interior block. We're looking south at uh, 94th Street. 
where there are a lot of rooftop additions. Um, on the right is uh, uh, looking toward um, uh, 95th Street. This, um, this uh, what we're looking at is a, uh, is a rooftop addition that was approved in um, 2005. Uh, and that's uh, also visible from that alley. It doesn't look like that. That's some sort of protective covering the, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the addition is under there. Um, next. This row house is one of the shortest on the block and it's next to a 16 story apartment building. And after the, it's a matching three story building, um, everything else is four stories um, on, you know, on the block, uh, behind, on the south, across the street. Um, and then on the, on the far west of the block are big um, buildings. And that part of uh, the block is not in the district. They're big modern buildings. Next. There are a lot of rear and rooftop additions on the block. Most of the row houses have rear additions and a, a significant percentage have rooftop additions or at least bulkheads. Next. You can see here from the Google view uh, of our block and the surrounding blocks that there are a lot of rooftop additions here. Uh, this is looking to the south and next. This is looking to the east and next. Andrew Percival is going to discuss the design. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, so on the slide right now, you're seeing the existing and the proposed front, which is the north elevation of the building. In the proposed elevation on the right, you can see at rooftop level, we're proposing a one-story addition that rises to five foot eight above the existing cornice, along with an eight foot tall um, egress bulkhead, which is required by the DOB to provide egress to the new roof level. We're not proposing any other changes to the front facade, um, which is otherwise in good condition. This is now the rear facade or the south elevation of the building. Working from the base of the building upwards at basement level down here, we are proposing a one story addition that is about 10 feet, just under 10 feet tall and projects three feet from the, uh, the existing building facade. The 2017 uh, designation, oh, the 2017 approval that Mary referred to um, did not increase the FAR of the building. It was an FAR swap with the uh, previous dog leg that existed. This new addition will add about 50 square feet to the building envelope. On top of this addition is generated a, a terrace at first floor level um, right here. And then that exterior terrace has a, a simple black guardrail and a exterior stair to access the rear yard from first floor level. Over the top of the terrace, we're proposing a, a small canopy um, that will also project uh, just over three feet from the building, the same depth as the one story addition below it. That canopy is metal and glass, um, metal to match the, the rest of the addition beneath it. Everything at basement and first floor level is not visible in that, um, from that 94th Street view corridor that Mary was referring to, which you'll see when we come to the views later on. At third floor level, we're proposing to uh, reintroduce two lintels above the masonry openings. Um, these lintels will match those at the sister townhouse, 8 West 95th. And we are also proposing to extend or lengthen the existing window opening to make that a door onto the rear terrace. The bottom of the existing window is not visible from 94th Street right now. So once extended um, from, from that public thoroughfare on 94th Street, you would, you would not be able to notice that that window has been turned into a door. We're not proposing to widen the opening either. So it's maintaining the historic opening for that window. At roof level, once again, you can see the one story addition at the rear and then the um, required stair bulkhead. Um, we're also proposing to replace all the uh, existing windows on this rear facade with new windows in kind, um, which you'll see in the 3D renderings when we get to that point. This is the existing east elevation. So this is the elevation that faces that alleyway. And in the proposed elevation, you can see um, we're proposing four new, uh, four new windows on the east facade, two on the second floor, two on the third floor. These new windows are gonna be double hung windows um, to match the historic windows on the front facade in color and approximately match those in size as well. 
At the rear facade, you can see that just over three foot deep extension and the stair to the rear terrace. We're also proposing to raise the parapet, uh, the existing parapet on the east facade of the building. Um, where you see noted front offset here, there's an exterior terrace off the fourth floor addition. So instead of adding a guardrail, we're proposing to raise this parapet. Currently the parapet steps down by one foot one inches uh, just behind the cornice. We're proposing to step up one foot one inch instead and then carry that parapet height through to the rear chimney. Um, this results in a parapet height ranging from, uh, because of the pitch on the existing roof, ranging from three foot eight to five foot four above the existing roof. On this um, elevation as well, dotted in are the mechanical units located on at the new roof level, as well as the um, five uh, chimney, uh, chimney extensions shown, which we have, con so these are the chimneys, um, the flues between us and eight West 95th, which we're consolidating, proposing to consolidate um, at the location of the bulkhead. So they'll rise to three feet above the height of the bulkhead. These are 3D renderings of the third floor and the fourth floor from the rear of the building. So on third floor level, you can see those new lintels and the um, existing window extended down to become a door to the terrace. The rooftop addition itself, we're proposing to be a utilitarian roof structure with panelized metal rain screen cladding, such as will blend in with the surrounding roofscape in both materiality and color. Where the um, roof addition is offset back from the rear facade and the existing brick cornice here, we're proposing a transition um, area, uh, which we're referring to as a mansard roof that um, articulates this kind of rear set setback and maintains the hierarchy of the existing brick cornice whilst also um, providing a continuity of articulation from the existing zinc gutter here um, from that point into the new proposed structure. Um, the the uh, roof addition is um, the program on the interior is for two offices, one that faces south and one that faces north. Each office has one of these uh, bay windows that you can see here that project, project out from the principal massing of the roof addition. They're projecting out so as to direct the views from the interior in the kind of more advantageous direction. So with this, with this office specifically, that that bay window is is tilting your view towards the uh, the west, so into the back of the block rather than towards that 1920s apartment building on the east over here. Um, in these views, you can also see on top of the roof um, the proposed locations for some of the mechanical units the uh, black metal guardrail that we're proposing and those consolidated um, chimney flues at the bulkhead location. The design principles are the same at the front of the rooftop addition. So in this instance, the bay window projects out and turns towards Central Park. Um, so towards the west instead of towards the east. And um, also at this location, because we have a, now a split level roof with this roof terrace off the, um, off the front of the roof addition, we are providing an FDNY access ladder from the roof terrace up to the roof addition, the, the principal roof now. Um, on, this, um, on these views as well, you can clearly see that step up in the um, east wall parapet that um, is acting as the kind of safety rail for that um, roof terrace as well. In terms of the materiality of this roof addition, as noted, we're proposing that it's a panelized metal rain screen system. Um, we would propose that this be a, um, a gray beige color to fit in with um, surrounding rooftop additions, as well as tall building facades around so that it is as maximally blending in with the existing roofscape and as possible. The mansard roof section, that transition section from the existing historic facade at the rear to the, um, the rooftop addition, we're proposing to be a pre-weathered zinc to match the existing gutter. And then the window trims and uh, railings are all proposed to be black painted metal. At the rear addition, so this is um, specifically at the first floor and basement level, which are not visible from any public thoroughfare. We're proposing a similar um, uh, panelized metal rain screen system. In this instance, it'll be a dark bronze black color as opposed to the uh, gray beige color of the roof. And that's so as to tie into the, um, the replacement window trim color, which will be a dark bronze black to match the windows that are existing um, that were approved under the 2017 application. 
the railing here as well uh, will also be a dark bronze black um, color. Um, the next few slides are just showing the proposed plans. So uh, existing and demolition are on the top and proposed on the bottom. This is the cellar plan. Uh, basement level plan or garden level. First floor or parlor level. Second floor plan. Third floor plan. And I'm going to pause on the fourth floor plan quickly to talk about how um, uh, the offsets for the um, roof addition. Um, in addition to raising the parapet so as to reduce the visibility of the roof addition, we've also held the facades of the roof addition back from the historic um, north, east, and south facades of the building. On the east facade, we've held it in by two foot nine away from that, that raised parapet. And at the front facade of the building, we've held it in at the, on the west side of, of our building, 13 foot three and a half inches. And on the east side of the building, we've pulled it back an additional foot. Um, the northeast corner of the roof addition, so that's this corner here, it is and always was the most potentially visible corner of the addition from 95th Street because of that alleyway to the east of the building. So we've pulled that back an extra foot um, to try and a, get it as, as much behind this um, chimney breast as possible and, and B, just um, to try and reduce the visibility of that corner as much as possible um, whilst um, maintaining the interior space that works. Um, and then at the rear, we have a three foot offset where that mansard roof um, um, section uh, transition zone is. And as you can see here, we have the two bay windows that project into those offsets, um, but they're not kind of full height parts of the addition. This is the bulkhead and, and principal roof plan. So you can see the AC units here. They're all weighted to the west of the building. Uh, again, that's to keep everything as far away and pulled back from the east facade where that alleyway is as possible. And then this is the full roof. The existing building section here, um, showing dotted in the proposed areas of demolition on the interior and exterior. Um, so we're taking off the full roof to do the rooftop addition. The existing ceiling height in the um, in, at the landing area of the third floor is nine foot seven, and you can see on the next slide, um, as well as the parapet and the offsets, we've also depressed the fourth floor addition into the existing building envelope as much as we can. So that's um, limited our clear ceiling height in the third floor to eight foot six, and then we've matched that eight foot six clear ceiling height on the fourth floor. This results in an overall. Um, uh, so you can see the sorry, the line of existing roof dotted in here. So the majority of our roof addition falls underneath um, underneath that line of existing roof. This results in a, a kind of full addition height from our proposed new exterior terrace height of 17 foot 10. Nine foot 10 of that is the um, fourth floor, and then a further eight foot is the um, DOB required egress bulkhead. Um, we have the standard three foot six guardrail running around the perimeter of that, um, the new roof, the three foot high chimney flues, and then at the rear, um, the rear addition, the stair to the rear facade, uh, to the rear yard, and then that, that canopy that projects out the same three foot one and a half inches. I'm gonna hand back to Mary now to just talk through the visibility and the mock-up and um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, this is the mock-up. The orange is the, uh, it's, this is looking um, south from 95th Street. The orange is the addition in the stair bulkhead. Um, on the left, the raised parapet is bare wood um, and the mechanical units up above are blue and the top railing is black. And you can see the flue extensions mocked up at the, at the far back and to the right. Next. The addition isn't visible for most of 96th Street, 95th Street. Uh, there is, and we'll see this, a slight visibility from the side uh, facade uh, when looking down the alley, separating the building uh, from the uh, apartment building. Um, uh, next. This is a visibility study. Uh, it, it, it's uh, visible from a small section of sidewalk, as you can see, and um, from the beginning to the end. We did, um, we did, ex we experimented with parapet heights and uh, the mock-up is showing the highest and the lowest possible. Um, and we, we decided on somewhere in the middle. So the montage, which is our proposal, 
is a height in the middle of those two pieces of wood that you see right there that Andrew is pointing to. Um, next, Andrew. That view, of course, is is very um, is a very telephoto, and this is what you actually see from the street. Um, there's the mock-up on the montage. You have to look very carefully, but you do see the um, the addition a little bit of it above the chimney, and a little bit more past the chimney, heading um, heading toward uh, 94th. And then you see the, you can see the railing um, on the top of that. Uh, next. This is a, a, is a montage of the, uh, of the proposed uh, east facade windows. Next. This is a view study of the view of the rear uh, of the, um, of the mock-up from, uh, from the rear facade. So this is from 94th Street. Once again, you see it from even less, you, you walk a few steps and it's gone. Uh, next. Here is the mock-up and the montage that you actually see, yeah. you will yeah. see. And uh, very way in the back um, uh, there, that little, that black thing, that's that, uh, that approved um, addition on 5 West 95th Street. Next. And that's our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. All right, are there any questions, commissioners? All right, not seeing any questions, we'll move to public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to testify on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And I will turn it over to Lisa Kersavage to take us through the testimony. Great, thank you. Um, we had two people sign up to speak um, and I see their hands. Um, Sarah Bernhardt, I'm gonna start with you. Hey, Sarah. There you go. Please state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Uh, Sarah, we can't hear you. Um, I think that you're not connected to audio. Um, so I'm going to bring in the next speaker and maybe you can um, see if you can get connected to the audio. Uh, so Richard um, Schoenfeld. Hello. Okay, Richard. Okay. How does that mean, sir? Are we good? Yes, we're good. Please state your name for the record and you have three minutes. Will do. I'm Richard Schoenfeld, S-C-H-O-E-N-F-E-L-D-T, as on the screen. I'm a member of the West 94th. Okay. Um, so, Richard, now you have frozen. If not, let's be doing the... Richard? Okay, we're having some technical issues. Um, Richard, we're gonna see if you can come back. Sarah, I wanna make sure that I'm not frozen, right? No, it's not you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay um, let me try again. Sarah Bernhardt, let's see if we can get your audio up. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. I hear you. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Sarah Bernhardt for Landmark West. The Landmark West Certificate of Appropriateness Committee appreciates the applicant's drawing set, which clearly enumerate the multitude of changes proposed. We are surprised after having testified on this property a mere seven years ago to see the completed project again with so many additional modifications. The tweaking of the most recent redesign introduces some concerns. For example, at the topmost row, the rear punched window punched openings, the applicant now seeks three doors. For cohesion with its sibling row house, we would ask the single punched window opening remain, thus connecting the rear facade of number six with number eight. On paper, the litany of changes tick many boxes, updating non-historic windows, employing variant materials like standing seam siding from a, and from a massing perspective and setting the bulkhead. 
cumulatively. However, these changes rise the rear elevation from 41 feet, six and a quarter inches to 60 feet, five and a quarter inches, almost by a full 50%. Although not visible from the primary facade, these accretions dwarf the underlying landmark. The landmark was certificate of appropriateness committee finds the proposed work to be excessive and just detracts from the landmark. We would recommend denial of this application of re-renovation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And I see Richard um, Schoenfeld, Schoenfeld, you are back. I am back. Okay, great. Um, Sorry. That's okay. You can just start over. Okay, Lisa, I'm Richard Schoenfeld. Name is on the screen. I'm a member of the West 95th Street Block Association, and the owner of 8 West 95th Street, the twin of 6 West 95th Street, whose re-renovation I oppose. I've owned number eight for more than 40 years. Many residents on the block arrived before me and one family is raising its third generation here. Of the 40 brownstones here, more than 90% are owner occupied and we have preserved the architectural history, character and scale of our houses. Stoops and extensions are largely intact, facades have been restored, period appropriate lamps, street lamps have been installed and only a partial uh, floor has been added to a building on the street at the rooftop level. In 1965, James Polshak renovated number 18 and his renovation has become the model for updates on West 95th Street, namely, Interior reworking has no exterior impact. The Polshek standard has prevailed for more than 50 years. The first renovation of number six met this standard. This proposed re-renovation does not. So my neighbors and I oppose this second renovation of number six as being inconsistent with the block's history and ignoring the architectural delight of this Horace Hartwell creation that has been singled out for recognition by the AIA. This proposed re-renovation a mere two years after the first adds a 23 foot superstructure to a 38 foot building and encroaches 50 square feet into the rear yard. These exterior changes are not consistent with the history, character and scale of the house. Were he here today, Frank Gilbert, your first secretary, would oppose this re-renovation. He championed national preservation to protect structures of historical and architectural interest. And number six certainly qualifies, dating from the Hamilton family's landholding. The architectural distinction of number six is diminished by this insensitive enlargement of the house, which I oppose, as do my neighbors who have submitted their written opposition. There is not a single vote of support for this proposal on our block where preservation is sacred. Please honor the memory of Frank Gilbert and fulfill your preservation role by rejecting the second renovation that fails to protect the historical and architectural heritage of our historic district. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next um, we have uh, Michelle Parker. Okay, Michelle, I brought you in. Thank you, good. Can you see me? Yes, we can see you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners, chair. Um, I am Michelle Parker, and I am the co-chair of the Preservation Committee of Community Board 7. Community Board 7, at their full board meeting, voted unanimously in support of this application. We found the materials, the configuration, the design of the proposed rooftop addition, expanded rear addition, and the additional windows on the west side of the existing L extension, 
consistent with features routinely found on the Upper West Side and therefore appropriate to the character of the historic district. Thank you. Great, hey, thank you. Okay, and I don't see any other hands raised for this item. Okay, thank you very much. So I'd like to turn back to the applicant team and ask if you'd like to respond to some of the comments or any of the comments. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we always appreciate the community board support. Um, I'll say the easy one about the rear addition is it's just a little over three feet in, uh, in depth and it doesn't even project as far as the uh, rear addition on number eight. Um, or it's about even with number eight. And once Oops, you just muted, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're proposed, that's, did you know the space bar did that? Um, um, we're proposing a one story addition um, and it's for home offices. This is the, the thing that's kind of a post pandemic issue. Um, I didn't know there was a cap on um, renovations <laughs> but um, um, but this uh, is kind of a continuation of the of the original renovation um, uh, Andrew if you did want to talk at all about the um, about the uh, the height um, I don't know I mean maybe if you go to the ax axonometric that shows for the with uh, the adjacent uh, buildings just to sort of put the additions in context that might be helpful for your response. Okay. Hang on, let me just read, bring it to the full screen. Okay, you can click on the screen. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Well, um, I know um, uh, the, uh, one thing is there there are some pretty substantial rooftop additions on this um, on this block, um, mm -hmm. and then the block is capped at either end by some pretty tall buildings. And uh, the other, just the other thing is that the height was kept as uh, as low as possible. Oh, there we go. I found it. Okay. Oh, sorry, In everybody. I was struggling with controls. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, sorry, I missed Mary. What you were just saying while I was trying to work that there, out. There, um, there are rooftop additions on the block, and the, and a few of them are pretty substantial. And across the street as well. So, mm -hmm. on, both on our block and on the other side of our street as well. Um, in terms of the height, um, the the bulkhead is is a DOB requirement. Um, the um to add the offices or even just to bring the building up to current code we would need to add a bulkhead so we're in adding the offices um as well the that that the, makes necessary the um the full 17 um foot 10 height off the new roof um roof level that i was quoting before um and, in term and from that view through the gap do you see the bulkhead or not because it's pushed so far to the other side of the building? From the from 95th Street, you do not yeah. see the bulkhead. Okay. Um, from 94th Street, you do, because from 94th Street, if I go to the last slide, you see the whole rear facade from the second That's floor up. Through that gap behind. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if I can zoom in at all or not. I don't know if that's possible, but this no. corner, this corner that you just see here, is not the bulkhead. The bulkhead is is back here somewhere, um, as are the mechanical units. So none of that's visible from this alleyway. Um, it's just the the very minor um, views of the the single story and then the guardrail that you can see from Ninety Fifth Street, mm -hmm. and then on um, and then um, sorry, just. This is just a few steps further down the alleyway to see the windows. And by that point, the whole addition is invisible behind the parapet. Um, and then from the rear, <coughs> um, this is where you can see. So this was kind of the worst angle where you can just see the bulkhead here behind the building. Um, so if you took one step to the right, you'd see a little bit more bulkhead. 
um, but a little bit less. Okay, but it's the, a, a very limited view corridor. I think it's it's about here. four or five spaces on the sidewalk, yeah. Okay. Um, and then for the rear addition, yes, as Mary as Mary noted, it's um, it's only just over three foot in the addition. The previous ap approval did not add any FAR to the building. It was a straight swap of right. um, of and, take, taking off the dog leg and then bringing out the facade. So that's on the on the plans. And does the three foot projection align with the uh, rear yard addition on the adjacent building? It is behind the rear yard the okay. addition on the adjacent out building. As far. Okay. Yeah. So this is the the adjacent building. So that's where we used to be. I think. Sorry, the basement plan shows. This dotted line is what our rear facade used to look like. Okay. And then this is what it looks like now. And then that's where we're proposing to come out to. At the first floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioners, do we have any final questions? Yes, Commissioner Lutfi. Commissioner Lutfi. Did you have a question? Sorry, sorry about that. So I just wanted to clarify something about the height. So the 10 foot 11 high addition on the top, you're saying you need that full height? So it's 10 foot 11 at the rear. So we've basically taken the low point of the existing roof as the point of our new interior finished floor within a couple of inches and carried that across straight. So we're coming below the existing roof line for the majority of the addition. And then that 10 foot 11 is what we need. Um, that's from the existing low point of the roof, which that's, so we basically have an eight foot six clear interior finish, and then our mechanical and structural buildup and insulation for um, energy code is all what's making up this, this kind of sandwich of material okay. here. So we've, we've tried to suppress um, or depress rather the roof addition as much as we can into the existing third floor and then match that ceiling height so that we're not putting a, a crazy tall addition on because normally these additions are the lower ceiling height um, so we're, we're not trying to make this a expansive cavernous space we're trying to make, make it consistent with what is there on the third floor already mm -hmm. okay well thank you for clarifying that Oh, and I, I suppose one of the other questions was with regards to the windows and the switch from the door at the rear facade to a window yeah. at the rear facade. Um, so we are not proposing to keep the existing double doors as double doors. We're, we're keeping the opening and we're replacing it with a double window unit. Um, I'm just going to the 3D view. Um, but this will be the only door out into the rear yard. We're just maintaining the existing opening size here. Um, so just lengthening that one opening to make that a single door rather than a double door. So it's a single door and then a double window in the existing door opening. Sorry. Okay. All right, any other final questions? All right, commissioners, I'm sending you all requests to unmute so we can move to close the hearing and begin our discussion, all right. And Commissioner Bland, would you make a motion to close the hearing? Uh, so moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Chapin, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So uh, the hearing is closed and we're going to begin our discussion. And there are really sort of three components for the commission to focus on the lot line windows and the canopy at the back are eligible for staff level permits as is the restoration of stone lintels on the top floor. So the commissioners will be looking at the raising of the parapet and the construction of the rooftop addition, which um, will be obliquely partially visible uh, through the gap between 6th with 95th Street and the apartment building, um, looking over that raised parapet. And then also visible from 94th Street so through a gap. You'll see the upper floors of the addition, also a gap view. 
And the second component of the application is the dropping of the sill at the window opening and the top floor of the rear facade. And the third component is the rear one story rear yard addition, which um, will extend out three feet and will not project deeper than the uh, rear yard addition at 8 West 95th Street um, and is obviously flanked on the other side by a large apartment building. And ultimately, we'll also be thinking about the cumulative effect of, of all of the additions. So commissioners, let's begin that discussion. Commissioner Goldblum, would you like to lead this one? Okay. <laughs> I think that um, it's generally appropriate. I think that because it's adjacent to a larger building, um, uh, the rooftop addition is generally, uh, is generally has very limited visibility. I think it's appropriate. Although I think we should, <clears throat> someone on the staff ought to talk to somebody at the DOB high up enough to give you a definitive answer as to whether or not the kind of bulkhead that you saw Chair Carroll and commented yeah. on last week <clears throat> which is a much lower bulkhead with a kind of a sliding off uh, glass panel uh, is acceptable uh, because in cases like this where we have visibility of bulkheads and bulkheads are really provided for service access for the most part, um, such bulkheads should be, um, should, they should become standard practice for landmark situations if, if we know, if we can be sure that they meet code. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had situations where people said that they do, where they don't. And, you know, right. it may be that, you know, examiner A says yes, and examiner B says no, but one would hope that nowadays that would not be the case. Um, I do think that the, there is reason to question the overall in, um, effect of these multiple additions um, on this rather small townhouse. But I think the fact that, um, uh, the rear, the earlier rear yard addition was a net zero increase in, in volume kind of mitigates that a little bit. Uh, the parapet raising is fine, and totally appropriate. The um, uh, lowering of that first floor window, I'm, I'm, uh, that top floor window, I'm, I'm not sure why that wouldn't be a staff level, but it's certainly mm -hmm. appropriate. Yes. Great, thank you. All right, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, I, I agree with Commissioner Goblin. Um, the character is uh, appropriate and uh, uh, I have no objection to this case. Okay, Commissioner Bland. I'd agree, uh, it's all been said already. Uh, don't object to anything that's been said. Um, and I'll just comment nice graphics as well. <clears throat> Commissioner Luffy. Uh, I agree, I think it's appropriate. Commissioner Jefferson? Appropriate. Commissioner Gustafson? Agreed. And Commissioner Chapin? Yeah, I agree. Um, it's appropriate and I applicant for a thorough and expeditious presentation. Okay, thank you. All right, so I think we have a consensus here given the context of this building. So Commissioner Goldblum, would you make the motion? Sure. Um, regarding 6 West 95th Street in the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District, <coughs> the application is to construct rear yard and rooftop addition, <coughs> modify masonry opening, install mechanical equipment, and raise parapets. I know that the building style, scare materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Upper West Side Central Park West Historic District. I recommend approval finding that the work will not eliminate any significant architectural features that the proposed rear yard addition will not be visible from any public thoroughfare, that the one story rear yard addition will only modestly expand the basement level of the existing rear yard addition and will project less into the central green space than the existing rear yard extension of the adjacent building with the materials finishes, solid to void ratio, and size and proportions of masonry openings to the rear yard addition will be consistent with the character of secondary residential facades and houses of this age and type. That the lowering of the masonry opening at the top floor of the rear facade will only uh, remove a limited amount of plain brickwork with, which, and will maintain the rhythm of masonry openings at the top floor on this pair of buildings will be only mis minimally visible from a distance through a gap in the street wall on West 94th Street. That the raised portion of the roof and rooftop addition will be set back from rear corbeling 
allowing the historic masking of the house to be maintained will not diminish any significant unifying characteristics of the pair. That the design materiality of the roof top addition, featuring gray beige painted metal rain screen panels and gray finished metal window and door assemblies and neutral finished mechanical equipment will be in keeping with the materials and images of other rooftop accretions within the historic district that the increase in height. These parapet will be minimal and not affect significant feature and will minimize visibility of most of the rooftop addition that the rooftop addition and associated mechanical equipment will not be visible directly over the primary facade and will only be minimally visible from limited vantage points on West 95th and West 94th streets from oblique angles and against the backdrop of taller apartment buildings the cumulative massing the proposed rooftop addition, rear yard, existing rear yard addition, proposed rear yard addition will not overwhelm the building, and the proposed work will not detract from the special architectural and historic character of the building or the Upper West Side, Central Park West Historic District. Thank you, and Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Bland. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Uh, aye, aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. Eight in favor and none opposed, the motion mm -hmm. passes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Approved. Thank you, and we'll move to the next item now. Thank you, everybody. Okay, the next item is public hearing item number six, LPC 22-10859 an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1382, lot 60. 1868 Street in the Upper East Side Historic District. This is a Beaux-Arts style residence designed by CPH Gilbert and built in 1904 to 05. And the application is to install a gate at the entrance stairs. Commissioners, the applicants have joined the hearing. Um, you now have control of the presentation. Just click on the screen to advance the slides. State your name for the record and you may begin. So Alec Jacobs, you just need to unmute yourself and you have control of the presentation. Okay, we can't hear you. I see you're unmuted, but we're having trouble hearing you. All right, so there must be a problem with the audio. So I don't know if you're using earbuds or ear wired connection. Maybe try disconnecting them and see if your computer audio works. Um, Bernadette, Preservation Department staff. Carlos, do you want to present at this point until Alex can get his sound going? So Carlos, you'll have to unmute to answer Bernadette. Do you, would you like to start the presentation? Or Chair Carol, do you want me to walk through it and then they can answer questions? Sure, Bernadette, that would be great. Thank you. Bernadette, do you want me to give you control? Of yes, the presentation? thank you. Okay. 
Good afternoon, Commissioners. Bernard Aras, Preservation Department staff. This application is for 18 East 68th Street. It's a proposal to install gates and kind of the attachments to it at uh, an entrance stair. You may recall not that long ago, we th there was a proposal, a public hearing to install two lions. Oh, let me go back. As well as to install a taller gate. And the commissioners approved the lions that were gonna sit on these pedestals, but did not. Us? Ah, okay. I'm so sorry. I apologize very much, Bernadette. Thank you so much for, for kind of taking over. Um, okay. uh, we had some technical difficulties here. Um, uh, I can kind of take over where Bernadette left off. Um, so uh, uh, where we left off is uh, there's a proposal to replace gates and, and lions in front of the building back in February. Um, uh, the, the, the commission uh, split their decision and approved, approved the lions, but not the gate. They felt the gate was... Uh, blocking the uh, not appropriate for the building. It was too high. It was blocking the view to the building and, and not in keeping with the building. Um, we've heard the uh, commissioner's remarks and we revised our proposal to kind of address their concerns. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide there to show what, what uh, what's there. Actually, the next one is that reason that that's the existing condition. You can see the, the height of the existing railing and stoop. Which, which is not really a stoop, it's more of a front step. It's, it's atypical, it's not a brownstone building, it's a standalone mansion. Uh, if you'd like to go to the next slide, please. I want to show. So this is the revised uh, gate that we're proposing. You can see it's much lower. Initially, the, the first gate that we proposed was uh, match the height of the adjacent uh, ornamental railing on, on the area way that was four foot three high. Uh, the gate is now uh, only uh, two foot six high. It's much lower. Not only is it lower, but we've kind of decondensed it. We've uh, we've opened it up a lot more. Whereas the original proposal, the gate was uh, matched the existing ornamental railings in the areaway and up above that had that was a lot more dense and you couldn't see through. We've uh, we've 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 modified the design to make it a lot a lot more see through. However, while still retaining uh, some of the uh, the uh, elements of the original uh, ironwork uh, that's on the building. So we, we feel with the reduced height, which, which, which you can much more see the ornamental ironwork on the doors in front and the, and the gates down below, this kind of addresses the concern that the, that the commission had before. Uh, it's lower, it's in line with the existing airway, so it does look like it, it, it's appropriate and belongs, and it's kind of tucked away onto the step. Um, uh, want to go to the, if we could go to the next slide, please. So uh, these were examples of some stoop gates, which we're not doing. We don't have a stoop. We're not really blocking the entrance. It's and it, it's it kind of belongs there because it, it's tucked between these stone pilasters that uh, are existing there. Uh, and I, I think that that's really it. Uh, if we have any questions, all right, commissioners, do we have any questions? All right, I don't see any questions at this time, so we'll see if we have public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you, and I will turn it over to Lisa to take us through the testimony. Okay, great. Um, we didn't have any signups, but I see three hands raised. Uh, so we'll start with Friends of the Upper East Side. Okay. Friends, there you go. Hi, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, Laura Varelli representing Friends of the Upper East Side Historic Districts. Chair Carroll and honorable commissioners. Over the past decade, Friends has seen less than a handful of projects get outright denied by this commission on the Upper East Side. One of those was the proposed gate at the stoop of 18 East 68th Street last February. The commission recommended denial and I quote, finding that stoop gates are not historically found at houses of this age and style within this historic district and are not a typical feature of the surrounding streetscape and that the proposed gate will not relate well to the composition of the facade and areaway ensemble and will be an atypical presence which will detract from the prominence of the entrance and overall of design of the building, end quote. While Friends believes the outer gate is slightly less intrusive, it is still inappropriate for all the reasons that the commission denied this proposal in the first place. 
This exemplar Beaux-Arts townhouse has a very prominent entrance with a narrow airway, small stoop, and detailed door. The proposed gate, despite being shorter and more transparent, will, would still detract from the building's entrance and create a very bu busy appearance. None of the precedents shown by the applicant are relevant to this application, as the building's style and design are completely different from the 18A60A Street. Additionally, it is unclear if those gates have been approved by this commission. We ask the commission to deny this proposal again and the applicant to move forward with a less intrusive alternative solution, such as a chain, as has been suggested at the February hearing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, um, Michelle Arbelou. Okay, Michelle, we've brought you in. Hello, Michelle Arblu for the Historic Districts Council. HTC finds this application to be inappropriate and anti-urban. The applicant's collection of precedent images only reinforces this observation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Mark Bench. Oops. Lisa, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Carroll and Commissioners. <clears throat> this is Mark Bench, for and on behalf of the Victorian Society, New York. <clears throat> when we started our review of this item, we had a moment of deja vu, when we were sure we'd either seen this proposal or that there are a larger number of CPH Gilbert mansions scattered around the Upper East Side, whose owners want stoop gates and lions than any of us realized. Sure enough, a proposal for the installation of stoop gates and two lion sculptures was heard at the February 22nd, 2022 public hearing. Following the hearing, the commission voted to approve the lion sculptures and deny the gates. The denial was based on the inappropriateness of the presence of the gates at this type of stoop and house in this historic district and not on any specific feature as their height. We cannot understand why this proposal for stoop gates is returning to the commission. The gates which were denied, seen in the screenshot from the presentation attached to our written testimony, are remarkably similar to those which are now proposed, with the major difference being that the new gates are approximately three inches shorter than the gates which were denied. Commissioners, we urge you to take no action until these two proposals can be reviewed in conjunction and someone explains why a proposal, which was deemed inappropriate in February, is back in August with such minor changes. Finally, we repeat that the recommendation we made in February, a simple chain which tells people this is private property is a better solution. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And... I don't see any other hands raised, but I did want to note that we received our Manhattan Community Board um, 8 recommends approval of the application and that we received a letter in support from the Indonesian consulate um, located across the street. Okay, thank you. And I think just to clarify, I think there was a, 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 mis a mistake in the testimony. The um, commission took, uh, denied a previous proposal for a, uh, a fence at this location. The application today is for a fence that is one foot three inches lower than the fence that we previously saw. So it is not three inches, it's one foot three inches. So I think that was just a, a typo or a mistake in the testimony. And as such, with a different proposal, the applicant has the opportunity to come back to the commission to uh, seek approval. So now I'd like to turn to the applicant and ask if you would like to respond to the public testimony. Uh, yes, sure. Um, uh, the exam first of all, I'd just like to address the examples shown. The examples shown were, showed, were basically to show what, what this application is not. It, it, we don't really have a stoop per se as much as we have main entrance stairs. And those, those were examples of what this application is, is not doing. Those were inappropriate uh, gates that, that 
that we're not looking to uh, mimic or imitate. We have a unique property. Uh, and I think, you know, based on the, uh, our um, incorporating the commission's previous comments, we've got a, a unique solution that matches this unique, uh, this unique facade. Uh, again, we, there is ironwork on the front facade. We are in line with that ironwork and we're matching some of the elements of the ironwork. However, we are lessening the density of the ironwork and lowering it so that the front door all the way, except for the bottom, maybe five or six inches is completely visible from the street. Um, we think this would be a more appropriate um, uh, solution than a chain and more permanent in keeping with the, with the property. Thank you. All right, thank you. Commissioners, do we have any final questions? All right, I am starting to send you requests to unmute so that we can close the hearing and begin our discussion. All right, Commissioner Lutfi, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Goldblum, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. And I think, you know, the it, it, we've had a sort of mixed <clears throat> feeling about gates on stoops of row houses at where we have um, been concerned about the um, relationship between the stoop and the house and the public way. And um, in many cases have denied it. In some cases in this historic district, as well as other historic districts, we have approved it on stoops um, because of where they're located. They're the only row house on the block or they're adjacent to a commercial thoroughfare or some, they're not part of a continuous row. So there have been some exceptions. In this case, this applicant is presenting to us an idea that this is um, not a typical row house where you would have a row of stoops and a gate that would interrupt a, a rhythm, but a single uh, Beaux-Arts townhouse or one-off townhouse and um, with wide entrance stairs and I think is likening it to some of the other Beaux-Arts neoclassical townhouses in this historic district, many of which have ironwork at the area way and in front of the um, uh, front area way and entrance. And so they're proposing something after listening to our comments last time about the sort of obscuring the open feeling and the historic fabric of the door, they proposed a different solution here, which is um, one foot, three inches lower and simpler and more transparent than the historic iron work, which they are were previously proposing to match, um, but still in line with it to create a kind of uniform line at the front area way. So um, I think they're asking us to look at this differently. We have looked at area way fences and, and entrance fences differently. We, we uh, looked at um, and approved some gates on steps on uh, the houses in Chelsea, which were part of the General Theological Seminary. Um, so where we have had unique situations, we've had a, a different perspective. So that's something we can think about as we consider the applicant's uh, request for this revised scheme. So um, let's begin that discussion. Commissioner Chapin, would you like to start this one? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, I, I think that uh, in any case, this is a much more appropriate uh, look, looking uh, pen, uh, gate than the one we saw previously. Uh, I do think that in this case, uh, we have a Beaux-Arts uh, building, which this short fence uh, really looks to me almost like a little decorative element uh, such as you would you know, find on a balcony or something because it's short enough for me, instead of presenting as an imposing fence, as I say, it, it really kind of looks like a decorative uh, element at the gate and at, at the gate, but you know, more, uh, more decorative and it's not concealing any feature of the front door. So I, I, I'm, uh, I actually feel I can approve this. Uh, we'll see what others think, but I, I think it's approvable. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goldblum. 
I'm afraid I don't agree. I, <laughs> I think that that the um, the, raw, the 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 ironwork at the front of this building is very distinctive, and um, this will this kind of drops the line down. I know that it's done in order to um, create the illusion that in elevation we're not blocking the wrought iron at the doors but in real life i don't think you'll perceive that i think what you will perceive is the fact that you have very distinctive uh iron work uh fence to the left of the lion and then once you go to the right of the line it kind of drops down and changes design and looks a little bit like it went on a diet <laughs> and i just don't think that it's and i you know i think that the the uh, other mitigating factors that we talked about um, in other cases don't apply here. So I, I can't support it. Okay, and Commissioner Chen. Yeah, um, I am more in line with uh, Diana Chapin in this case. Uh, I think that uh, this is, has been, uh, is much lower and is, uh, you know, it's not blocking uh, any major portion of the uh, of the front gate, uh, I mean the front door. Uh, so I will wait to defer to see what the majority want to do in this case. Okay, all right, thank you. Commissioner Bland. Um, I confess to a more sympathetic view of why this is necessary. Um, mm -hmm. Although this is not the reason it, uh, for our purview, but the social behavior of uh -huh. the public realm has become so deplorable in our city, uh, generally, um, I have to sympathize with many of the <clears throat> people who do own um, row houses and, and have a problem because of <coughs> the public's um, use of them inappropriately. Um, but that's not our purview. <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, it, it can't not affect me a little bit. Um, I do think that um, because of the uh, different nature of this than a, than a traditional um, so-called brownstone with a, with a large stoop, whether it's straight or uh, L-shaped, uh, this is different. Uh, it's a series of a few steps. Uh, it has um, wrought iron railing and uh, wrought iron work all around it and it's a doors, a, a door um, a facade arrangement. Um, so um, I, I find that this is appropriate and, uh, and, and can support it in this case. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lutby. Um, so I, uh, I also feel like I can support this. I, I think that the way they handled it is, works pretty well. First of all, they made a shorter fence. So it's not literally not getting in the way <laughs> or ornate door, yeah, fence on the primary door uh, in the back. And it's not competing with the, uh, the fence, uh, you know, the, the, the railing on the side, but it does harmonize. So I feel as though it's been, uh, it, they sort of understood how to tear it and, um, I think it works well, and and it's uh, doesn't it's uh, not overwhelming. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. I, I look at this two ways. It's either function functional, or is it aesthetic? In terms of the function of the gate to so that security, I don't think it works. And in terms of aesthetic, it 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 doesn't do much for me. It it, it it doesn't do much for the door. So I cannot support it. Okay. Commissioner Gustafson. Uh, I was in the uh, Goldblum camp the first time around. And I, I think I even remembered that it was Michael who made the point about the chain. So, uh, and I remain in the Goldblum camp. Okay. All right, so while we do have uh, five of us who would support this, we don't have six today. So um, we'll take no action. Um, applicants uh, are welcome to come back when we have a, a full group of commissioners and represent or, um, or consider more changes such as the chain. So we won't take an action and we'll move to the next item.
Okay, the next item is public hearing item number seven, LPC 22-09211, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 2057, lot 36, 459 West 140th Street in the Hamilton Heights Historic District. This is a Bozar style townhouse designed by Neville and Bag and built in 1905-06. The application is to construct a rooftop addition, modify masonry openings, install a cornice, and modify the parapet. Commissioners, the applicant has joined the hearing. You now have control over the slides. Just click on the first slide to advance. State your name for the record, and you may begin. You could also please just unmute yourself. And you can just click on the slides and use the arrow keys or the mouse to advance. Hi, I'm sorry, I couldn't find the controls, but I'm getting them now. And I am I supposed to click share screen to see the presentation? Um, you you have um, control of the screen that's in front of you that you could see the splash screen that has the address on it. If you can just take your cursor and and just click on the screen and then you can advance the slides using. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yes, there okay. you go. Thank you. Okay. Just state your name for the record before you begin. Okay. Hi, my name is Zavilla Jackson Preston, architect for four five nine West One Fortieth Street. So good afternoon. On behalf of my client, WEAC, I'd like to thank the commission for the opportunity to present this project for consideration today. <clears throat> Excuse me. WEAC is a Harlem-based environmental justice organization founded in 1988. 459 West 140th Street, once renovated, will become WEAC's New York City headquarters. <clears throat> The proposed renovation work complies with LPC guidelines and the New York City zoning resolution. The house built around 1905 is one in a row of seven townhouses. The left photo shows the house <clears throat> with its brick parapet and cornice intact. The right shows the current state of the house. The location map to the left shows where the building is situated within the row of seven townhouses. The building is slated for gut rehabilitation and restoration of its masonry and historic elements. We'll be um, doing a brick parapet and cornice will be restored. The masonry will be cleaned and repointed and minor chips and cracks in the stone will be repaired. The fire escape will be removed. New historic windows will be installed. All wrought iron work will be reused and restored, and the stoop will be rebuilt. Excuse me, I went too far. <clears throat> the building will be a community facility, and as stated previously, the proposed work is in compliance relative to land use and the zoning envelope. This land use map illustrates the many community facilities that dot the Hamilton Heights Historic District with the City College of New York directly across the street from the site in this area. The diagrams on this slide show the existing building in gray, added bulk in orange, and most importantly, the permissible zoning envelope in blue. When we talk about the existing streetscape, this is a view of the block um, house that falls mid block. This is looking from Convent Avenue westward along 140th Street. This slide is you're standing on City College campus looking northward on Convent Avenue and the building is in the block. Here we're on Amsterdam Avenue looking uh, eastward on 140th Street. Again, the building is mid block. And on the block itself on 140th Street, we have a couple of homes that um, have built rooftop structures to either side of the site. This is 459. To the right of it, there's additional uh, bulk added there. And uh, to the left, a bulkhead has been added on another structure. 
When we look at the row of seven townhouses, they alternate between curved red brick facades and segmented beige brick facades. 459 <clears throat> is located in the center of the row and two other identical buildings are part of the row <clears throat> of seven, 463 on the left and 455 on the right. Here we can see the current state of the history historic elements on these three buildings. At the top, we have 455 with this original parapet intact. We can see at some point in the past, the cornice line, the cornice was removed and the stoop appears to have either been repaired or rebuilt at some point in the past. And a new, more contemporary wood iron railing was installed at uh, 463. Uh, the parapet appears to have been removed and potentially rebuilt with a running bond. The cornice was removed and the cornice line was parged with cement. The soup too here appears to have been repaired or rebuilt without the um, reinstallation of the historic railing. Our property, which is 459, shows that the parapet had some work in the past. The cornice line had been removed. The soup is in a severe state of disrepair, and the excuse me, and the railings remain intact. <clears throat> All ironwork will be removed, cataloged, and reinstalled. Again, here's the historic um, railing that remains at the stoop that will be reused. There's a uh, historic wrought iron work at the windows on the first floor. Those two will be removed and reinstalled in newly reconfigured windows at that level. The original door is no longer on site, but we do have the original grill work from that door and that too will be reinstalled within a new door. As we talk about um, the doors, this is a uh, picture, the historic door that still remains at 455, but we're proposing our new metal doors. The metal door would um, have the same dimensions as the historic door. And to the left, we have a secondary door that will come from an emergency staircase. That door would have a solid panel. The entry door, excuse me, would have a glazed panel. Here's a close up of the metal um, molding that's being proposed. And because we are proposing custom metal doors, we would paint the doors in a color very similar to the color of the wood on the historic door. I briefly mentioned that we would be reconfiguring the windows at the first floor. We've worked with the LPC uh, at the staff level to ensure that the window frames would have a color that would be consistent with the historic color of the windows. And so the sandstone color would be used to frame those windows. Uh, these are just simply details that have been provided to the LPC staff for the door with the transom above to the left of the main entry and the fixed uh, glazed window to the right of the main entry with the ventilation mover to the cellar below. <clears throat> uh, as we go back and talk about the parapet once again, the top photo is showing at a close-up of that existing parapet and the historical image below. This um, historic profile of the brick parapet will be restored and a new fiberglass cornice will be installed. Again, details that have been provided to the LPC at the SAP level. In addition to the proposal for the restoration of the historic elements, we're proposing to add additional bulk to the top of this building, a fifth floor addition with a bulkhead above. Um, I think some commissioners may or may not recall that this building was approved in 2006. At that time, additional bulk was proposed as well. The uh, 2006 application that was approved, if you looked at the front elevation of the building, it topped out at a height of 67 feet. The current application tops out at 64 feet. <clears throat> Looking from the rear, if one measured from grade to the top of the building in the 2006 application, the building topped out at 72 feet, five inches. And in today's application, the building tops out at 70 feet. Additionally, in 2006, uh, the approved proposal added bulk to the existing rear extension on the building, bringing the height of the rear extension up to 31 feet 10 inches. Today, we are not proposing to add any bulk to the rear extension, so that rear extension remains as is and tops out at 23 feet 3 inches. Uh, in 2006, six, additional bulk was proposed for the side yard and approved. 
uh, this application does not propose any additional bulk to the side yard at the rear of the building. In 2006, a um, metal panel system was proposed for cladding the uh, addition to the building. We too are proposing a um, metal panel. The 2006 panel was chosen more for its aesthetic value. Oh, I'm sorry, I clicked too much. Uh, today's proposal, we still uh, are proposing a metal panel. The panel is really um, a sustainable feature in a building that we are trying to achieve net zero in, and the panel really is a solar collector. I'm trying to advance, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The manufacturer's standard color chart for the solar uh, collector panel is to your left. And um, in an ideal world, we would want that panel to have a solar absorptivity of a 0.9495. And that would be at the top of the chart. And working with the staff, we settled on this color of chocolate brown, which gives us an absorptivity of about 0.74. And here's the manufacturer's standard profile for the panel. Again, uh, wall sections for the additional um, for the addition at the top of the building have been provided to the staff. And this picture is simply just showing uh, the panel and actually installed on a building. This is not a panel that is um, widely used in New York City already, but as um, we find buildings that don't have roof space for uh, photovoltaics and other kinds of measures, I would imagine that this panel will start to be seen um, being used throughout New York City. So again, this is uh, uh, this image is just inserted again to remind everyone that the additional bulk on the building fits well within the permissible zoning envelope. And so now if we just quickly look at the um, existing elevations um, versus the proposed. Again, I talked about the reconfiguration of the windows on the first floor. We have a ventilation window here for the cellar, a double hung window, a door with a transom. And what we're proposing is that we basically flip that arrangement to accommodate a stair from the cellar on the left with the transom above and the ventilation louver on the right with a fixed pane of glass above. Oops, sorry. Um, I don't get it too far. Forgive me. I'm trying. Um, okay, I don't know why it's not advancing, but here is the um, west elevation again, showing that uh, rear extension with the um, parapet and a door will give one access out to this rear extension and that will be used as a rear roof terrace. This is the fifth floor addition with the bulkhead above and again the restoration of the parapet and the cornice. Okay, if we talk about um, the sight lines on the building. If you're at zero degrees, 15, this is basically at a six foot height taken at mid block on 140th street, which is a narrow street at zero degrees, 15 degrees, which is the natural um, elevation of a head looking up or the 30 degrees. The um, addition is really not seen if you're mid block on the block. If we look at the vistas, the long vistas down the block, and here we are at Convent Avenue looking uphill toward Amsterdam, you start to see just a little bit of that additional bulk at the top peeking out. And if we're in Amsterdam Avenue looking eastward toward Convent Avenue going downhill, you get to see a bit more. If you're on 141st Street looking um, from Amsterdam Avenue, or from Convent Avenue, the addition is not visible at all. So as I begin to close uh, this out, um, I will quickly just go through um, some close-up photographs of the existing state of the building and what it looks like uh, currently. During the presentation, I mentioned the LPC approved 2006 application, but here we are in 2022, with the new application for the same building. For the record, let me say the 2006 funding climate was different and the 2006 proposal proved to be too costly for the client. Today, the public is much more aware of climate change, consequently funding organizations, funding for organizations such as WEAC is much more readily available. 
the client has identified sufficient funding, financing for the work scope, and due to the uncertainty of the current financial markets, time is of the essence for this approval for my client. With that said, I'd like to reiterate, restoration work will eliminate blight on the block. The community facility use is permissible. The current application has less bulk than the 2006 approved application. The currently proposed building height is lower than the 2006 approved application. And most importantly, the proposed work scope will fully restore the historic parapet, cornice, stoop, wrought iron work, and windows. After renovation, 459 will be the only historically restored facade on West 140th Street between Convent and Amsterdam Avenues. So um, I hope I did okay with my time, Michelle. So um, that concludes my presentation. And so if you have any questions, but again, I'd like to thank the commissioners for this opportunity to present this project. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, commissioners, do we have any questions? Yes, Commissioner Chapin, please go ahead. Yeah, yes, I just wanted to ask whether you could do a wooden door that would uh, achieve your goals for uh, you know, uh, conservation. Um, yes, um, budgets being budgets and money always being tight. Um, it really is a budgetary constraint to, to some degree. And also the nature of a community facility versus just a private residence in terms of long-term maintenance and all of this. This is why we opted to go with the metal door and ensuring that all the measurements would match the historic door. And we think um, just as you walk down the street as a casual pedestrian, if we make sure that we have a paint color that is very similar to the wood that, um, the, the naked eye won't perceive that that door is really a metal door versus the wood doors. Thank you. Yes. Okay, other questions? All right, I'm not seeing other questions at this time. So we'll move to public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to testify on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And I'll turn it over to Lisa Kersavage to take us through the testimony. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and I'll start with our sign-up sheet and the first person um, signed up, um, Michelle, Michelle Arbelou. I'm going to bring you in now. Hello, Michelle Arbelou for the Historic Bishops Council. HDC is generally in support of this project with one major objection. As a rule, we remain opposed to the use of fiberglass windows, including in this proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next um, we have Michael Ayun, thank. Michael Unthank. And I am uh, uh, calling in as a neighbor on the block and uh, just wanted to um, comment on some of our objections. Uh, many of the neighbors on the block and on 141st Street as well uh, object to several issues. On the facade issue, we do object to the, uh, the use of the metal door and we object to the, to the switching of the um, of the windows and the bait and the basement entrance as currently exists. Uh, we feel that that does interrupt the cadence of the rest of the block. And I think that that is uh, significant given the fact that many of us have uh, had to do renovations to our homes and have had to, you know, maintain the uh, integrity uh, per landmarks uh, of those uh, changes. I wanted to note that uh, the, the other large objection that we have in terms of landmarks is, is as regards to the addition of the uh, additional floor. Uh, we think that uh, certainly there, it can be seen, there are sight lines from which you can see or would be able to see this new addition, uh, particularly for the neighbors on 141st Street. It would be uh, a, 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 an issue for them in terms of uh, their view, their sight, the light that they get uh, in the rear of their homes. Um, also, um, 
uh, I want to point out that although there are additional uh, structures, uh, bulkheads that have been added, they have been approved by uh, landmarks in the past. I know my house has a, has a bulkhead that was approved by landmarks. And at that time, we had to go like three blocks away on Amsterdam Avenue to prove to them that they, that they could not be seen. So uh, also, also both of the uh, additions that were referenced in the presentation, uh, neither of which uh, amount to anything near uh, structural changes or structural additions that are proposed in this proposal. So I just wanted to log those uh, objections. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, uh, Yuan Chin. You in? I tried to bring you in. Oh, here we go. Okay, you in? You just need to unmute yourself. Okay, I've got it. Got it. And you can turn on your camera if you choose. Uh. Keep my cameras on. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Um, uh, my name is Yuan Chen, and I'm speaking on behalf of the West Harlem Community Preservation Organization, a community nonprofit, a steward, and advocate for preserving West Harlem, West Harlem's historic assets and cultural legacy. Um, I wanted to speak, I had submitted a letter, but um, I see the current presentation um, is slightly different from the, um, the renderings that, um, that um, are circulating in the community. So half of my statement that was submitted, my written testimony submitted, um, uh, um, does not apply in this case. I am very pleased to see that the front of fire escape um, is, is gone. And, um, but there's still some issues that we are in, um, in opposition to. Um, we are opposed to the proposed changes to the exterior facade, which essentially transforms a historic residential structure into a mid-block community facility on the north side of West 140th between Amsterdam and Convent Avenue. The uh, subject property is one of a graceful row of Boards uh, townhouses, the last of the early houses in the district, which were erected in 1905 to 1906, built by developer Gustavus Lawrence in association with architects Neville and Rag. The row along with four others to the west denotes the southern boundary of the Hamilton Heights Historic District designated in 1974. Today, uh, most of the structures on 140th have retained the original architectural elements exhibiting um, finely carved details such as cartouches and large scroll brackets and many of the original wrought iron um, windows and door grills at the street level are still intact. Um, I see now that the plan still uh, proposes um, the removal of um, the decorative ironwork from the door, although it was mentioned um, it will would be uh, refurbished and restored, uh, uh, returned to the windows and the service entrance doors but we object to the removal of the, um, uh, of the decorative ironwork from the main entrance and the replacement of, entrance, of the entrance door with metal and glass materials incompatible with the historic fabric of the block and the district. Further, um, these changes disrupt the continuity in design and material of the row, townhouse row and introduces a modern, institutional architectural expression on a landmark residential block. 
Um, we, again, we're glad that the, um, that the fire escape is gone. And, um, and we feel that um, since this is a gut rehab, that there should be additional, there should be a further exploration on the configuration, um, on retaining the, the configuration of the original windows and doors, that they should not be altered. Um, we're concerned that um, the organization's uh, programs may be greater than the residential structure was designed to support and that the exterior uh, modification built out at the roof level also undermined the architectural integrity of the district and set a terrible precedent if plans are submitted are approved. Um, it's you not have, clear. You've gone well, well over your time. Could you? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, I'm at the end. Um, we haven't seen the sight lines as Michael um, uh, just mentioned um, of the of the um, bulkhead and the additional floors. So I'm not even sure, you know, how if it's one story or two story. It's not very clear. In any case, we, we, we disapprove of the configuration of the windows and doors, and we ask the commission to, to reject the plans to modify the facade as submitted, and that um, further work should be done to restore and retain the original architecture of the elements as intended by Neville and Bragg, and, and um, the applicant and LPC should explore other options for accessible means of egress. Thank you very much for okay. the time and the opportunity to comment. Okay, and next we have Mark Bench. Thank you, Lisa, again. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. This is Mark Bench for and behalf of the Victorian Society in New York. The Victorian Society is very happy to see that this long neglected building will be restored and put to good use by a prominent and important civic organization. We find that for the most part, the proposed alterations and restoration work are appropriate. The rooftop addition apparently won't be visible and we think fiberglass is an, in a, is an appropriate substitute material for the restored roof cornice on a building of this age and type. Despite our overall positive reaction, there are a couple of things we feel require further review. First, we see no details for the proposed simulated double hung fiberglass windows. These date details should be provided and the windows approved only if they meet preservation standards for replacement windows. Energy efficient, true double hung windows that meet these standards are available. They may not be the most efficient, but we don't believe historic preservation standards should take second place to desires for maximum energy efficiency. Second, we would want to know if there's a compelling reason to switch the locations of the ground floor window and door. In this row of buildings, the two buildings in adjacent pair are mirror images, so that at ground floor, the two buildings alternate in having adjacent doors or adjacent windows. The change proposed at 459 would cause this pattern to be broken. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I see one more hand raised. Um, this might be part of the team, but... Um, I'll bring Peggy Shepard react in. Um, did you want to? Yes, I'd like to speak. Can you hear okay. me? Yes. Uh, could you please state your name for the record? You have three minutes. Yes. I'm Peggy Shepard. I'm executive director and co-founder of WEACT for Environmental Justice. Uh, we are the um, 
owners at 459 West 140th Street, where we are developing uh, a community environmental education center as, as well as our offices. Um, we have been in the community for 34 years, uh, working to ensure a clean and healthy environment, as well as climate resilience. And it has taken us um, a bit of time to develop the building. Um, we in fact had our landmarks permit and buildings permit about 10 years ago, all approved and ready to go. When uh, the city took back um, several million dollars uh, from our city council allotment because there had been some, uh, some issue with the council person in Brooklyn. And so we then had to start raising funds all over again. And so that's why we have uh, had a long period of time before we could develop the building. We now are about to go to closing on the building. We are very excited to be able to have a center for the community there. As you know, this uh, building is right across the street from City College. And this particular building used to be owned by uh, a club at City College. Um, as many of the brownstones on this block uh, were owned by, or certainly leased by um, clubs at, community co at City College. We are talking about um, building uh, a green roof and uh, a conference room on the roof, uh, just as the house next door to us, which is, I believe, uh, 457, also has a structure uh, on their roof as well with, I think, a jacuzzi and maybe a fireplace of some sort. Um, so again, um, uh, structures on the roof are not out of the ordinary uh, on that block or in the community. And again, uh, what we're doing is uh, meets code and meets the FAR. And uh, again, it allows us to, to be able to provide a little more space for community meetings um, uh, on that rooftop. So we are very excited about moving ahead. We're about to go to closing in the next few weeks. This is one of the, uh, uh, the last um, approvals we need before going to the buildings department uh, where our plans have been filed. And so again, um, as I said, we had the landmark preservation uh, permits 10 years ago, uh, we're doing the same thing that we um, applied for then. And uh, again, this is going to be an incredible community facility um, that we are very excited about and many people in our community are as well. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and I don't see any other hands raised. Um, I did want to note um, that we received a resolution from Manhattan Community Board 9 who recommends approval of the project. Great, thank you very much. So, um, you know, so nice that we heard from Peggy Shepard during that moment of testimony, but I would like to turn back to the team now and see if you'd like to respond to other comments that we heard in the testimony. Zavilla, you there? Oh, I can't do Hi. Hi. I'm sorry, my screen froze and I was here pressing frantically. 
to try to make it unfreeze. So what did you say to me? I apologize. Uh, I just asked if you would like to respond to any of the comments we've heard in the testimony. We've heard a little yes. bit about, yeah. Yes. Um, one issue was relative to the energy efficiency of fiberglass windows versus other windows. Um, I understand that comment and I do understand the nature of preservation and um, you know one's viewpoint. But I do think that we live in a world where we have to begin to take this notion of climate change seriously. And I think it would almost be derelict for an organization that champions uh, advocacy for climate issues not to ensure that the building was um, being built um, for whatever we consider to be the higher standards in 2022 to address those issues. And so um, we're working with one of the leading um, uh, sustainability engineers in the state, Tatum Engineering out of Albany, and they have been very clear about the preference for fiberglass um, windows and the energy modeling. So um, that is something I've worked with uh, the uh, with the LP staff at the staff level. And so that's my comment relative to uh, the windows. When we come to the first floor, um, we did not decide to mirror the servant's door from the right to the left in a willy nilly um, negligent manner. Um, the building interior is oddly configured. Uh, I should say the building footprint is oddly configured. And because it is a community facility, we must have two means of egress from the cellar. And if we were to locate that egress stair from the cellar on the right side of the building, we would not be able to establish an efficient uh, use of the space at the building interior. And so we really were forced into having that stair from the cellar on the left side. Once that decision was made, then we had to have a door to the street. And so I do, again, respect the preservation thought in terms of this being a, a row of seven houses and you know what it looks like. But we should say that there are minor differences with all of them. If one actually went out there and looked at the facades of each one, all of the stoops don't even have the same number of stairs. The um, window heights from the ground plane to the bottom sill of the window differs. And what I think is interesting about this particular building is that it's sited center in the row. So because it's dead center, I think that it's more um, permissible that uh, it could be okay to mirror the windows um, that are currently on the left, put them on the right in the servant's door, which is currently on the right to move it to uh, the left. Um, I think those were the major um, LPC um, um, uh, points that were made. And so if I missed something, please tell me. Okay, I, I had one question. It, can you go back to the, the view of it, of the addition from Convent Avenue? Yes. Let's Go back. I'm I'm trying to do the share screen thing again. You just have to click on the oh, screen. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you did tell me that. Okay. And then you should be able to move it. Okay, there it is. And so you wanted to see the um just the view. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You can try using your arrow keys. To, oh, there you go. Cool. Why is it doing that? Okay, I'm gonna click again. I'm clicking, but it's not coming up. Um, I can flip through the slides for you if Thanks. that's easier. Yeah. And yeah. then um, you you just let me know when uh, to stop. Okay. You wanted to see the elevations? I just want to see the visibility of the rooftop addition from Conrad. Okay, the massing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's 141st Street. Go, no, uh, back again. Back again. So, all right, so it's... No, that's not it. Um, This is page 47. Is that a seven or two? But it's this two is... pages before this page. Okay. Okay, that's from Amsterdam. And one more page forward, backwards. Yes, that's where you're on Convent Avenue. And okay. so you are going uphill, so it peaks there. 
And again, um, that's why I referenced the um, 2006 application because those sight lines at that time were deemed acceptable. And yeah. we, as I said, I, I um, mentioned that all of our heights are lower than what was deemed acceptable with the prior application. Okay, and so I guess my, I know it is lower and I do appreciate yes. that. I just also wondered if you had thought about doing a railing instead of a solid parapet to sort of also- yeah, I, actually, I actually thought that the railing drew more attention to it because it's like everything is solid masonry. I thought that contrast of transparency would force one to look at it even more so. Okay. Yeah. All right, Commissioner Goldblum. Okay, hi, thank you. Can you go to page 35 of 52, which is, I guess, page, it's actually page 44 in, in PDF language. There we go. Um, is there a reason why you're not opening up those rear windows? Uh, the On the right, that's the yeah. elevator shaft. That's the elevator so, shaft. Yeah, so you have to remember, we're dealing with a structure that's 18 feet wide, and we have to have a commercial um, grade elevator in this building. And that was the one place we could tuck it and again, be able to maintain usable space at the interior. Yes, that's that's okay. the that is also the place where we approved a vertical extension as well, right? Was that yeah, uh, in the, the previous yeah, in the previous application, that whole side yard was filled in with additional building. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, other questions? Okay, so we're gonna move to our discussion. Commissioners, I'm starting to send you requests to unmute. Okay, and Commissioner Jefferson, would you make a motion to close the hearing? The move. Thank you, and Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion and his, um, as has been presented, this is a um, long time project, long time coming. Um, this was an application we saw in 2006 when we approved um, the adaptive reuse of this row house for we act and included additions on the roof and at the rear. And as we've heard today, the additions at the rear are no longer part of the plan, um, but they are seeking reauthorization for additions at the roof, which would be lower than was previously approved by the commission in addition to the changes to the front uh, facade. So we'll begin that discussion. Commissioner Gustafson, would you like to start this one? Okay, um, there's a lot going on here, but let's, uh, I'm gonna try to be efficient about this. The, uh, I think that, you know, the, the, the um, there's a couple of issues here that are sort of the applicants biggest concerns I would think and and one would be the uh, the increase in the uh, you know the rooftop addition the increase in the mass of the building um, and and I'm actually um, I'm actually fine with that um, it, it, looking at all the you know the visibility studies etc I think that and that's sort of a, a big driver for them I think um, uh, there I my only comment is I think the last question that I think everybody commented on which was that uh, I disagree with the applicant on the difference between a, a metal railing and a solid parapet. I think the a railing is going to be less apparent. So maybe that's a, a that seems like a smaller um, change. Um, I understand as well that they need to, I, I'm, I'm okay with flipping the, um, the arrangement on the front of the building. Um, I know that it's going to change the rhythm, but it is a, um, I'm not sure that other than a few people stare, who stare at it every day from across the street, um, I'm not sure you, anybody's going to notice that um, in the rhythm as you go down the street. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that as well. Um, there are um, uh, a couple of details, though, that I think they, they, they will be sort of upset about. Um, um, the, um, uh, do we commonly approve um, replacing an original wood door with a metal door? I mean, is that something that's, uh, Sarah, that uh, happens frequently? Um, you know, we have seen a number of applications to replace mm -hmm. non-historic doors with metal mm -hmm. doors that replicate the historic condition, or we've approved replacing historic doors that are very deteriorated with doors that are different in some form 
whether it be configuration or material. So, um, but I don't know that there's anything exactly identical to this. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about that and, and not, to, not just for this building, but you know, I, there's, you know, this is, that, that is um, doing it here um, suggests that we will do that in the future on similar buildings in similar, um, in similar districts um, and in particular this district. And I don't think I can go along with that. Um, there are certainly wood doors that um, will provide them with um, a, a great degree of um, insulation, and and I and I think that that's um, that is of concern to me. I, I the uh, yeah the other concerns I have are also on the front um, facade of the building. The um, uh, uh, the cornice probably needs to be um, uh, more deep to, to, to. They need to work with staff on the details of that of the of the uh, fiberglass cornice because. Uh, fiberglass cornices can become, um, uh, without the detail, they're, they're, they become much more obvious at that height. Um, you know, this is not very high up in the air, quite visible. Um, so that's, a, that's another issue. Um, there is also a, um, there, uh, the, um, above that basement entrance, they're putting in a, essentially a sheet of glass. Um, and, and there's got to be some way that we can give some, um, uh, some form to that window, whether it's, um, uh, a, um, a, a double hung or some sort of simulated double hung, uh, but that needs to get some, it, a sheet of glass doesn't seem to be the uh, appropriate in this, um, in this neighborhood. Um, let's see, what else is there? What did, what did I miss? Um, I, think that's, I think that's all the comments I have. Okay, great, thank you. Commissioner Chapin. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm very happy to see this building uh, finally be restored, uh, which is great. Um, I uh, also can approve the rooftop addition and the material that is proposed and the fiberglass cornice. I think, it, yes, we should be, uh, you know, having work with the staff on the details, but it's okay, uh, in my opinion, to uh, install a fiberglass cornice here. Uh, I did question the use of fiberglass on the windows, but uh, I think for this particular situation, after listening to the applicant, I can approve that. Uh, and I note that we have looked at a lot of passive houses and approved unusual, well, different things that we don't approve in different situations sometimes for the passive houses. Um, I also agree with John on the uh, window on the uh, uh, first floor that it looks a little odd and something needs to be uh, done uh, to address the fact of that that long window just doesn't look appropriate. So they need to that that's a minor thing that can the staff can work with them on. And I also uh, think that they really should use a wooden door here. Uh, compared to, you know, anyway, it, I think that really is necessary and uh, maintenance was mentioned, but a good wooden door um, will last a really long time uh, with a fairly minimal maintenance. So those are my comments and um, um, I can approve this uh, with, those, with those provisions. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goldblum. Thank you. Um, I agree with most of what's been said so far. Uh, I think in terms of the uh, front facade, it was very clear to me that the, the uh, right thing to do with this building from a neighbor, neighborliness perspective, as well as a preservation perspective, is to make that ground floor as close as possible to what it currently is. And so I would suggest that in addition to the comments about making the right side window into a double hung, which I think is the right way to go, the applicant should replicate the limestone sill detail and, the, and the, the flat limestone in between the sill of that window and the top of the louver so that it really just is a flip. So the building looks like a restored version of itself, but you flipped it. I would suggest that other changes should be uh, considered, uh, should, not, should not be made. It should be, it should be fairly straightforward restoration except for flip. I, I, I have no problem with the uh, metal door, actually, as long as the wrought iron goes back, uh, which was stated as going to happen. Uh, but of course, if they do a wood door, that's fine, too. 
uh, agree with the comments on the cornice. I, I would suggest that the, the corrugated metal material for the rooftop and rear yard addition is appropriate, but it's gotta be detailed carefully in concert with staff. The uh, photograph that was shown to us of how it looks with the mitered corners and all that stuff, that takes a little bit of work and uh, care. Uh, otherwise they come in with kind of standard uh, closer moldings on the sides and on the top, and it tends to look a little bit like a, an industrial building. And I think for this location where it, it will be visible, uh, they should work, the, the applicant should work with the staff to make sure the details are, are sharp. And I agree that, that the top parapet should be uh, eliminated in, in favor of a railing. Okay, thank you. Oops, hang on a sec. All right, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, um, I agree with most of the comment that has been said by the fellow commissioners. Uh, uh, and I think if you're gonna go with the fiberglass corners, I think that the details uh, need to you know, work closely with the staff. And I agree with Michael and the rest of the, the members about that the, uh, you know, the solid par parapet on the roof should be uh, uh, changed to metal railings uh, to reduce visibility. Um, and I think Michael made an excellent suggestion about if it's possible to do the flip on that, that ground floor um, and, uh, and, and along with uh, what's been said by other commissions. Okay. And I'm sorry, did you mention the door, the material of the door? Yeah, I, I don't, I'm less, uh, you know, I, I'm ambivalent. I think uh, since a couple of commissioners are fine with the metal, obviously the wooden door would be better but okay. I would defer to the majority. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Bland. Um, most of it's been said. Um, I will just emphasize the railing versus uh, the parapet um, up top and wood door for me. It's too close to the street not to be wood. <clears throat> okay. Commissioner Lutfi. Oh. I think. She had to step away. Okay, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, I agree with all the comments. And <laughs> I'm amazing how Michael has such a good eye that he saw that uh, by the double hung window, that piece there. Very good, very good detail, Michael. No. Um, I think it should be a wood door. And just because of how close it is to, uh, to the street and, and Guess we'd be a nice thing. Okay. All right. So I think we have um, heard from everybody, and I think that there is generally support for this application, um, but with a few uh, conditions that I think can be worked out with the staff. And that would include um, doing a railing in lieu of the parapet on the rooftop addition refining the details of the fiberglass cornice and the rooftop cladding uh, with in consultation with the staff, um, restudying the configuration of the window and replicating the sill below it um, at the ground floor and revising the proposal to include a wood door in lieu of a metal door. So I think with those four conditions to and uh, four areas of uh, restudy that can happen with the staff, we can go ahead and make a motion. Commissioner Gustafson, are you comfortable with making a motion? With um, as always, with, your, with you by my side. Okay. I think I'll get there. Uh, in the matter of LPC 22-09211-459 West 140th Street in the Hamilton Heights Historic District, the application is to construct a rooftop addition, modify masonry openings, install a cornice, and modify the parapet. I note that the building style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Hamilton Heights Historic District. I recommend approval with a few modifications, finding that the proposed work will support the adaptive reuse and repair of this long vacant building, that buildings throughout the row feature different configurations of the flanking masonry openings at the first floor. Therefore, the proposed reversing of their configuration will not call undue attention to itself. The existing historic ironwork will be reinstalled within the modified openings by maintaining these significant features. Um, that the proposed metal and glass 
uh, door and transom window will be in keeping with secondary entrance infill, commonly found in buildings of this type, style, and age, and will be set back behind the uh, reinstalled historic ironwork. Um, Let's see, that the installation of a, of a cornice will bring the building closer to its historic appearance, um, that the proposed rooftop addition will not be visible over the building's primary facade, that due to the slope of the street and presence of a large apartment building to the east, only a small portion of the addition will be visible from Convent Avenue in the context of other larger buildings, that the proposed solar thermal cladding of the addition will closely approximate the appearance of traditional metal claddings and be in keeping with cladding materials typically found at rooftop additions and bulkheads at buildings of on buildings of this type and the dark brown finish will help it recede from view uh, that the rooftop addition will be set back from the projecting bay at the front facade and throw though aligning with the plane of the rear facade the change of material from brick to metal cladding at the rear facade will help maintain a sense of the building's original massing and its residential scale and that the work uh, will not diminish the special architectural and historic character of the Hamilton Heights Historic District. However, I find that the large single light window adjacent to the entrance door is not in keeping with the fenestration pattern at first floors found throughout the block. And the elongated window will alter the proportions and detract from the base of the building and the unity of the row. Um, uh, that the details of the proposed cornice and the uh, rooftop cladding are not fully developed and that the use of solid parapets will increase the visibility of the proposed rooftop addition. Therefore, I recommend that the window at the first floor be changed from a single light fixed window to a double hung or single hung window or a fixed in place window simulating the appearance of double hung window and the stone sill be raised to match the height of other similarly located windows in the row, that the applicant work with staff to refine the details of the proposed fiberglass cornice, as well as the details of the rooftop cladding, um, and that the solid parapets at the rooftop addition be changed to feature simple metal railings, and also that the um, a wood door be, uh, uh, be used in, um, uh, or re retain either retain the original door or replace with a uh, with a with a door uh, a wood door. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Chapin. Would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Bland. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. Aye. Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. She left. She, she stepped away, yeah. Yes. Uh, seven in favor and none opposed. The motion passes. All right. So that's approved with those conditions. Please continue to work with the staff and we'll move to the next item. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next item is public hearing item number eight. LPC 20-08205, an application for a certificate of appropriateness the Borough of Brooklyn, Block 1932, Lot 42, 279 Lafayette Avenue, AKA 279 at 291 Lafayette Avenue and 36 to 50 St. James Place, Emmanuel Baptist Church, individual landmark. This is a neo-French Gothic style church building and chapel designed by Francis Hatch Kimball in 1987 with an attached school building built in 1927. And the application is to install LED video screens. And commissioner staff will be walking through components of this application. Staff, you may begin. Good afternoon, commissioners. James Rusiello, Landmarks Preservation Staff. Uh, Emanuel Baptist Church is an individual landmark located at the northwest corner of Lafayette Avenue and St. James Place and within the eastern edge of the Cobble Hill Historic District. Wow. The application is to replace the two non-historic deter deteriorated wooden church sign boxes at the southeast corner of the building with LED video display screens of roughly the same size. The two video display monitors will be programmable with color still pictorial displays with text without flashing images or fast display changes without any motion picture video displays. The screen will be turned off between at least 8.30 p.m. and 8 a.m. The church's business manager, Corey Macbeth, is here to answer any of your questions and to explain the church's need for this proposal. Thank you. Great, thank you, James. And is the applicant here? I'm looking in the list yes, panel. Corey. Please go ahead, Mr. McBeth. Hi, yes. So uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church has applied for the permit uh, for these display boards so that we can advertise uh, 
community program that we provide. Um, as you saw in the presentation, such uh, programs, like uh, we actually have something coming up that would be a benefit to the community, a, a community shred day. Um, so it, it would allow us to promote these events um, on a larger scale. And the current uh, displays, they're manual displays and they're wood boxes and they're in a state of disrepair. All right, so commissioners, do we have any questions? All right, let's move to public testimony and Mr. Macbeth will come back to you again after that. So if you're in the meeting and would like to testify on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you and I'll turn it over to Lisa Krasavage to take us through the testimony, if there is any. Okay, yes, um, we did not have anybody sign up to speak on this item. Oh, I do see one hand raised, so Mark Bench. Thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon, commissioners. <clears throat> this is Mark Bench for the Victorian Society in New York. The Victorian Society sympathizes with the New York City institutions needs to convey information about their programs in such a crowded field. But LED signs can have a visual impact that is inappropriate for historic structures and neighborhoods. In considering the use of LED signs for this church's signage, we recommend that any proposed screen be designed to fit inside the two existing historic pedimented housings. Screens within these housings would be nearly as large as those proposed. This way, the historic surrounds will not be lost. When the screens are off, they will look less like unused televisions. If the screens are out of services, the box can still be used in the traditional way. The church's name will always be apparent and the end result will not detract quite as much from this stately stone church built in 1887. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I see another hand raised, uh, Reverend Anthony Truffaut, and I will bring you in now. To the commissioners, good afternoon. Uh, I'm glad that you have given us this opportunity to uh, share what we intend. I wanna make sure that you are clear that this is consistent uh, with our mission and our purpose. Always we try to make sure that we connect uh, people in this community uh, and beyond with the resources and relationships uh, that improve their quality of life. We are, make, we are requesting this upgrade because it is a matter of the church keeping abreast uh, with, the, uh, with the progress that, and in particular the tech technological progress uh, that everywhere uh, around us is occurring. Whenever we have made a proposal, we've always made sure that, we, uh, that we've tried to retain the, the uh, current historic uh, aesthetic. And our proposal uh, was never to provide anything uh, that, was, uh, that did not use the footprint of the current boards. Uh, we have always brought before the commission uh, anything that we have ever done with the understanding that we have uh, sought to abide by the guidelines that you've given us. Uh, when we did uh, the ramps that we installed on both the St. James side and the Lafayette side, we brought it before you. When we did the uh, security uh, uh, lamps, the security cameras, excuse me, uh, we brought that before you. When we did the additional lighting, uh, which not only was a benefit to us, but more importantly, a benefit to the community uh, on both the Lafayette and St. James side so that people can walk and not only see um, and not stumble, but people can walk and feel safe uh, if there is any approaching danger. So I simply ask that you um, bear that in mind as, we, uh, as you make your deliberations about uh, whether or not this is something that we can go forward with. 
Great. And could you also please state your name for the record? Uh, Anthony Trufant, Reverend Anthony Trufant. I've been the senior pastor of Emmanuel for 32 years. Great. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and well, that, why don't we keep Mr. Uh, Reverend Trufant in the meeting so that um, if okay. we have questions, he can also respond. Okay, I've just brought him back okay. and I do not see any other hands raised. Um, I did want to note that um, we heard from Brooklyn Community Board 2 who recommends approval of the project. Okay, great. Um, so. Reverend Trufant and Mr. Macbeth, we did hear um, some testimony suggesting that the signs could be, or did you ex asking whether you had explored installing them within the existing frames or a frame? So I don't know if you'd like to respond to that or if there is anything else you'd like to respond to. Um, what I, what I wanna point out is that the intent has always been to use the existing footprint, uh, never anything that goes beyond what is currently there. Okay, um, but the idea of doing a frame around it, had you thought about that? Yes, uh, that, that is the intent. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, commissioners, do we have any other questions? All right, I am sending you all request to unmute. All right, and uh, commissioner, Gustafson, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the hearing is closed and we'll begin our discussion. And you know, we have um, reviewed applications to do uh, LED screens in place of um, former plaque type signs for uh, many institutions, including houses of worship in the past. So th this is not necessarily a sort of a new concept for us, um, but we have looked at detailing and placement. So I think we can have a conversation about those details. Um, Commissioner Lutfi, would you like to start this one? Sure. <clears throat> so as you said, uh, Sarah, we have approved these uh, in the past and, re you know, recent past at that, uh, because it is a very effective way for uh, congregations to get information uh, about what their church or synagogue uh, is offering not only in terms of uh, in terms of services and also in terms of programs. Um, so if I, I mean, on page, I believe it's page five uh, of the presentation, it looks like there are two existing frames here that um, could, in fact, as, uh, as one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, speakers commented, um, could, in fact, hold uh, these, would, could hold these. Uh, new, new, uh, um, these new signs. I think the question for us is, and I, I wanted to actually kind of throw this back to you, is how many illuminated signs on a place of worship do we normally approve? Do we generally approve one or do we approve more? Because I, I feel like we normally approve one. Um, and that too might be overkill. We have, we've done both and it really depends on the context and the sighting. And so um, I'm just trying to think, I think, um, Corey, can you recall some recent approvals? I think, did we do one for Central Synagogue that actually maybe had two symmetrically placed at the front? Am I remembering that correctly? Um, you know, uh... Caroline may actually have that in mind better than I do, having more involvement in the uh, religious property. So if she's here, she may be able to answer that better than I can. Yes, we've we've done a couple recently. We did it at St. Ignatius Loyola on Park Avenue. We've also done it at uh, Park East Synagogue. Oh, Park East Synagogue. Park East. 
Uh, and we did two in those. Two in those. Yeah. So we have yeah, done a two, both. And it's flanking the entry. <clears throat> right. On other on either side, you're saying. That's okay. correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um so I could I personally would prefer one, but I could certainly approve two um, if uh, if the other commissioners feel that that makes sense. But I do think this is uh, important and, and that the also the, the applicant should work with the staff on um, making sure that the uh, configuration works with their existing framing, which is lovely. Right. I, well, I do think that the existing framing is not historic and also I think deteriorated. So it may be that they have to work on a uh, new framing. Okay. So work with staff on the new framing. <laughs> okay. I think that's what was represented in the presentation. Okay. That James that's made. great. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Commissioner Jefferson. I, I agree. I think we have to be careful that it fits into the uh, uh, to the pilasters and have a little bit of a border, an edge yeah. around it. Certainly, so um, it fits. This one fits very well. So, let's follow what they have before. Okay, so you're comfortable with two since there are two there now. Okay, Commissioner Gustafson. Uh, using this, you know, some new framing that is um, that involves the name of the church, etc. I think is a fine idea. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of having the two signs so close to one another. I think it's, that's what's sort of odd about it. It's not so much having two signs. It's that, um, you know, when you're on that corner, you're going to see the signs. I mean, you're going to see one, you don't really need the second one. Um, but as, like I said, I, you know, if you, if you move that someplace else on the, um, on the, on the building, perhaps the other end of it, um, that I would be willing to approve something like that. But I don't think, I think, Two on the one corner is a bit overkill, okay. especially with you know with light lighted signs that are you know or video signs like this are much different from you know static, you know. Okay, so you signs. would be comfortable working with staff on the framing and then the location so that they yeah. are spread out enough. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Chapin. Yeah. I, I... I was in exactly the same uh, position because I'm, I'm a big fan of LED signs uh, because I think they reduce the need for multiple signs, plaques, banners, flags, and so forth to make effective communication to, in this case, the congregation or the larger community for programs that may be available for the larger community. So I'm very much in favor of letting them do that. Uh, I think that this is a large church uh, and it, I was bothered a bit by the, they've got two right next to each other and you can see one when you can see the other, as we can see in this picture. Not from every aspect, but you know, anyway, and obviously there should be one by the central entrance. So if the staff could work with the, uh, I'm, I would be happy to approve a second sign, however, because it's a large church, but I think they should work with the staff for a location which might be a little more, you know, uh, and be still visible on that, the other side of the church, okay. but not close to the existing one. And also to work with the staff on concealing any conduit that needs to be uh, provided. Okay. And, and obviously the frame as we previously discussed, but I can approve this, <laughs> you know, with, with the staff doing those those uh, things. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goldblum. Did ever go? Um, I think, yes. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. All right. Um, I just, I agree with Diana and, and uh, John um, that, and I would suggest further that look, a better look, I think one of the things that's challenging for me about these, this location is that the, the, the uh, buttresses are so visually prominent. Uh, I think that a better location to address John's concern and, and Diana's would be to center it under the under the sconce in the recessed portion of those facades. Uh, I think that'd be a much more literally recessive location that would uh, defer to the architecture. Um, if it is to stay here, I think it needs to be about six inches smaller in each dimension. Uh, like John said, these these uh, signs are much brighter, much more 
vivid and visually uh, compelling than, than a static sign. And I think that because it's so close to the corners of those buttresses, it kind of, uh, it alters the way one sees the architecture of the building. So I would, I would ask them to be smaller. I don't think that would necessarily be the case if they were located in those centers. Are much brighter, much brighter. Um, well, because somebody, somebody those are more re recessive, flatter, planar locations. But if it is going to stay here, I think it should get smaller. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Chen? Yeah, I'm in agreement with the, the, the commissioners uh, that there should be a frame around it, that the contour, uh, uh, if there's any, uh, be concealed. And uh, I will let them work with the staff uh, as to the location, the appropriate locations. Okay. Commissioner, Vice Chair Bland. Uh, it's all been said, but I'll say it quickly again. Yes, a new frame around it, uh, even though the um, images that we see don't um, show that. The pastor said that was the intent. Mm -hmm. uh, and it should be the same size, I think, yes. uh, that it um, has been. And uh, the location to be worked out with staff, uh, noting that maybe too close together or too close together. <clears throat> Okay, great. So I think we are all in agreement on this one. Um, Commissioner Luffy, would you be comfortable making a motion to approve with the condition that they work with the staff on the framing and the um, exact locations to ensure that it doesn't overwhelm the building? Great, sure. Um, in the matter of docket 22-11270-159, oh wait, I, that's not the right one. Item eight. You know, I think I moved it, hold on. It's before that. No, I know, I am, uh, I was looking at it and, let me see. Here it is. Okay, in the matter of docket 20 08205 279 Lafayette Avenue, aka 279 291 Lafayette Avenue, and 36 50 St. James Place, Emmanuel Baptist Church, individual landmark. A neo French Gothic style church building and chapel designed by Francis Hatch Kimball and built in 1887 with an attached school building built in 1927. The application is to install LED video screens. I know that the building is an individual landmark as well as the building whose style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Clinton Hill Historic Differ, uh, District. I recommend approval with modifications, finding that the work will not damage or eliminate any significant architectural features, that the signs will replace existing deteriorated conventional letterboard signs of a similar size and at the same location. And the presence of signs of this scale with changing information is in keeping with traditional signage typically found at religious buildings, that the signs feature LED technology containing programmable informational content, a modern version of traditional freestanding directories associated with religious buildings, that the proposed signs reuse existing attachments if possible, with a minimal amount of conduit painted to blend with the surrounding masonry, that the proposed main entrance door will incorporate the historic ironwork. Wait a minute, sorry. Now I see what happened. <laughs> that the programming will be limited to static images and a limited color palette and will not be functional at night. Um, <clears throat> that said, I recommend that the applicant work with staff on two things, uh, on developing framing that is appropriate for these signs, and also on establishing what the should be so uh, that they make sense on the building and are not too close to each other. 
Great, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Jefferson, would you second that motion? So oh, second. Thank you, Mark. Will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Bland. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. Is he not here? Sorry, aye. Uh, Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Aye. Commissioner Lefty. Aye. With eight in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. Okay, so the signs are approved and please continue to work on the staff on the detailing and the locations. Thank you. We will now move to public hearing item number nine, LPC 22-11270, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn, block 296, lot 41. Uh, 159 Congress Street in the Cobble Hill Historic District. This is an Anglo-Italianate style row house built in the mid 1850s. And the application is to create a terrace at the roof, reconstruct the rear facade and modify window openings. And commissioners, <clears throat> applicants have joined the hearing. You now have control of the slides. Remember to state your name for the record and you may begin. Uh, I, hi, I'm Brendan Coburn. I'm the architect for this project. Uh, the address is 159. Congress Street, and could I have the first slide, please? Uh, this is a front facade. It's the, the, the uh, house with emphasis on it. It's part of a little um, mansion house set of three houses, uh, all 16 feet, eight inches wide. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we are looking, we are asking for approval for three things today. First, the, uh, uh, a, um, a roof deck on the top floor in the front of the house to be, um, to be created by using what is a sort of trunk attic that you can see in this drawing in the upper right-hand corner of the building section. Uh, it's a space that's, that's uh, meant for storage currently or used as storage currently, and we want to recapture it as a deck. Um, and you'll see that section in a moment. And then we are also proposing a larger opening on the back of the house and we are proposing to rebuild the back wall of the house as well. So I'll, next slide, please. This is our section. So I'm gonna start by looking at the front, the front facade, front deck work. This is the proposed section through the house. And um, that's our landmarks person over there on the right. And you can see that um, there is no visibility of this proposed deck uh, that we're creating there uh, in this, from this point of view, but we'll see in uh, subsequent slides that um, there's also no visibility when you get to the other side of Veranda Park. Can I see the next slide, please? This is uh, an existing front elevation and the proposed front elevation after, uh, after the renovation occurs. And you can see that we are, uh, all of these things that are visible in the straight forward uh, projection here are not visible uh, because of the projection of the cornice and the sight lines, um, both from across the street and across the park. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a quick, Look at our donut number 41 is the uh, is our project. Next slide, please. Um, these are some uh, street views of our project and you can see that the cornice are, we've put a little bit of emphasis on our, our on the photograph on our building in all cases. The cornice really covers up all views uh, of this recessed and uh, sunken rooftop deck. Next slide, please. So this is our uh, veranda park is directly across the street or Cobble Hill Park directly across from the, the street from our project. So we have put our uh, landmarks person over on the far side of veranda place um, just to show that sight line and have designed the project to stay out of that sight line uh, with the exception being the chimney. Um, actually, that's the chimney of the neighbor's house anyway. And, the, uh, and the, a little piece of the ladder um, that goes, provides access from our roof deck up onto the roof. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is the view from across the park, uh, presently uh, without leaves or early in the spring. And you can see that there really is no, can't see anything uh, at this, at it, when there's no leaves. Um, next slide, please. And then this is a photograph of our mock-up. The, the, the orange wedge is the proposed skylight and the orange 
thing labeled ladder is the is the is that little piece of ladder that will be visible from across the park. Um, and then a photograph of the current situation there, which is very green. Um, next slide, please. These are just some context views of these uh, roofs up here. Um, chimneys, roofs, scuttles, skylights, fans, odds and ends, um, none of which is, is currently visible or will be visible after this project. Uh, next slide, please. Just a quick plan of the proposed, um, the existing roof with a small dormer that provides light for that trunk, storage space, and then the, we're just taking that whole room and making it into a small deck. Um, next slide, please. Just some details. Uh, next slide, please. Again, details and visibility study. So you can see that bit of the ladder that is visible. Next slide. Uh, so the second and third part of this application is to um, uh, rebuild this rear wall and create a new opening uh, in the in the, uh, this back wall. You can see that right now the, the back wall is, uh, this house is funny, it presents as uh, four stories on the front of the house and is six stories at the back of the house. And so this photograph, I would just draw your attention to, there's a, a main entry floor and then above that is a sort of piano noble uh, second floor. And then below the entry floor is an English basement which you can see is sort of sunken into a little area way there uh, down below. Um, the current, you can see these three facades are all together. Uh, they're part of this little uh, mansion house set. They are all the same. The, our house has been stuccoed over, which is the root of our uh, part of our, our problem and part of our application. The house to the left has been thorough sealed and the one to the far left is remains sort of brick. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. These are just some photographs of the interior condition of the wall. We are we want to rebuild this wall because the cost, it's not in a great, great shape. The stucco, when it comes off, it removes the face. It's a three wide brick wall, I should say. When you remove the stucco, it removes the, fa the, the finished face of the brick. Uh, on the inside wife, the, uh, the mortar is largely turned back to lime and sand. Um, there are a series of uh, lath nailers that are in it, and there's a series of bulges in the wall. Um, so uh, in working with the, uh, you know, the, our structural engineer and the contractor on this project, it was determined that it would be less expensive. Well, it wouldn't be less expensive. It would be the same cost, really, to build a new three-wide brick wall. Um, sorry, I should say a, a, a eight-inch reinforced CMU with a brick. Um, brick veneer, four inch brick veneer. So still the same 12 inches of solid masonry uh, tied together mechanically. Uh, then, it then it would be to, um, to stick with, you know, to try and make this wall work and then shore it up and then repair it and then make our opening. So it's, uh, it's one of these things where the cost of, of building a, a new wall will be equal or less to the cost of trying to preserve the old wall for three stories. And we will, at the end of it, with a new wall, have a new, much sturdier wall, a much stronger wall, a wall that'll last a couple hundred years. Um, whereas the other method leaves us with uh, having spent the same money, if not more, with an inferior and still sort of a poor quality wall. I would also note that the inner wife there, the inner wife of brick here is we, we can't, it's hard to examine, but it, it seems to be all sand and not, not well connected either. So if we could go to the next slide. Um, so the, this is the, the, the crux of our proposal here. So on the left is the existing condition, uh, stuccoed six, or call it a five and a half story wall. Our proposal on the right is to have um, this new larger opening uh, that is, uh, is to the two and a half stories tall. And then the upper three floors remain, the windows remain the same width and they, the window on the third floor gets longer by about a foot. Uh, that is the, is the window that's in the, uh, 
in the in a bedroom, a primary bedroom in the third floor of that house. And then the other openings, and these, this is a, a, a wood window system um, in this wall. So that, so we are, you know, we're proposing to just rebuild this brick wall so that it looks the same. We're going to use new uh, precast uh, to look like brownstone sills and lintels, um, and they would have the same dimension and projection off of the facade as the existing. And we would rebuild exactly the uh, the dentaled uh, and corbelled brick cornice that's at the top of the building. Um, so this is. Uh, I guess next slide. Next slide, please. These are just some some um, details of that three-story opening. The dotted line is showing the level of grade in the in the bulk of the backyard. Um, just a section describing the project. Next slide, please. This is uh, an overhead view of our donut, and oh, this is. We're just showing this because there, these are these three of four new townhouses that uh, are on Henry Street that were probably approved about 15, 10, 15 years ago. Um, they have this uh, larger glass opening facing the rear given this is a modern project on an empty lot. So it's a little bit of a different animal than what we're proposing. But I think there certainly is precedent for our, um, our proposal here um, in, in this case. Next slide, please. Oh, can we just go back to the um, side by side of the uh, proposed and exist? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so I think this is the one thing I would say about this elevation is the house to the right, which is a sort of more typical row house with a stoop and a um, and a parlor floor has and a, and a deck out back has a its own large opening at that parlor floor level and this is it's a perfect illustration of the more typical condition that you find in this donut and in and in cobble hill donuts in general um, what we have with our house is a little bit unusual given the narrowness of the house and the fact that it's three and a half stories uh sorry six stories tall in the rear yard um i believe that's it for okay. me thank you Commissioners, do we have any questions? All right, I don't see questions at this time, so we'll move to public testimony. If you're in the meeting and would like to testify on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you, and I'll turn it over to Lisa to take us through any testimony. Okay, thank you. Um, and I don't see any hands raised. Um, and sorry, my computer just froze, but I would note that we received um, a letter from Community Board 6 um, and recommending approval. Great, thank you. All right, commissioners, are there any final questions? All right, I'm sending you all requests to unmute so we can close the hearing and begin our discussion. Commissioner Chapin, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Goldblum, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? OK, the hearing's closed, and we'll begin our discussion. And so we have sort of two, two areas of work, the rooftop, where a portion of the roof is being uh, scooped out to create a recessed terrace. We've seen that type of approach in the past um, and have approved that. Um, there will be a, a little bit of a ladder that will be visible. And then there's a skylight at the rear side of the roof. And at the rear facade, the proposal is to um, reconfigure the windows at the first and second and, and partially partial above ground uh, floor to create a large opening with spandrels and to reconstruct the rest of the rear facade in its current plane with new brick, um, replicating the details and doing cast stone lintels and sills. So Commissioner Bland, would you like to start this one? Uh, I will. I'm unmuted, okay. Um, 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 I, th I think the visibility on the roof is uh, de minimis. Uh, that's not a problem for me. And I think the Rear facade is um, acceptable. Uh, we do this sort of thing uh, uh, frequently. I don't quite understand why the 
because there's uh, the principal bedroom is on the that third floor, I guess. Why we need to lower the masonry opening, but it doesn't seem to be like such a big deal either uh, to do it. So I, I think I'm fine with the whole thing as is. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Commissioner Lutfi. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think um, <clears throat> they've done a very smart and thoughtful job and I can approve this. Okay, Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, yeah, I, I thought the roof addition was masterful, the way the skylight works. It was very good. I think the back facade is acceptable. Mm -hmm. I can approve this. Okay, Commissioner Gustafson. Yep, I, I, I can approve it as well. Commissioner Chapin. I can approve it. Commissioner Goldblum. Agreed. And Commissioner Chen. Same here. Okay, so I think we have a consensus to approve. Um, and I can go ahead and make this motion for us. All right, in the matter of docket number uh, LPC 2211270, 159 Congress Street in the Cobble Hill Historic District, an Anglo Italianate style row house built in the mid 1850s. This is an application to create a terrace at the roof, reconstruct the rear facade and modify window openings. And I note that the building style, scale, materials and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Cobble Hill Historic District. I recommend approval finding that the proposed work will not damage or eliminate any significant architectural features, that the removal of a portion of the roof to create a sunken terrace fronted by a glazed wall and the installation of the skylight and ladder at the remainder of the roof will only be minimally visible at a distance if seen at all, that the proposed terrace will be modest in size and its presence will not alter the typology or overall character of the house, that the alterations to the rear facade will not be visible from any public thoroughfare, that the enlarged opening at the three lower floors, including the low cellar level framed by the remaining outer masonry piers will not overwhelm the six story facade or diminish the predominance or sense of structural support of the masonry, that the enlarged opening will not extend above the parlor floor level and its lintel level will be within close range of a wide opening at a neighboring building, thereby helping to helping the opening to harmonize with its context, and that the infill at the large opening at the large opening will maintain a division between floor levels, helping to support a residential scale. Yeah. Right, Vice Chair Bland, would you second that motion? Second. All right, Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Bland. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. Aye. Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. With eight in favor, none opposed, the motion passes. That um, is approved and we'll move to the our uh, public meeting agenda now. Right, and we'll begin with public meeting item number one. LPC 22-12096, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn block 297, lot 47 and 48, 193 to 195 Congress Street in the Cobble Hill Historic District. Uh, an Italianate style row house with neo greco details built in 1872 in an adjacent yard. The application is to amend a previously approved proposal to construct a new building. Uh, this did appear on an agenda, a public meeting item agenda uh, on July 12th, 2022, but it was not presented at that time. So we're seeing it uh, for the first time today. Uh, and the applicants are here. They have control of the presentation. Staff will be doing a brief int introduction uh, before we open the proceedings if necessary. Okay, so um, why don't we, I'll just open the proceedings now just in case we do need to do it. So Commissioner Goldblum, would you make a motion to open the proceedings? So moved. And Commissioner Chapin, would you second that motion? Commissioner Chapin, would you second the motion? All right. Uh, Commissioner Gustafson, would you second the motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. 
So if the applicants need to speak, they can do so seamlessly. Um, good afternoon, commissioners, Michelle Crayer and preservation staff. This application is to modify a previous approval to construct a new building at the subject premises. The new building was approved at the public hearing of May 24th, 2022, with the stipulations that the lot line windows at the west facade be eliminated and that the bulkhead be restudied in consultation with staff. <clears throat> the applicants are continuing to work with commission staff on the bulkhead pursuant to that stipulation of the approval. However, they would like to revisit the lot line windows. On this slide, you can see the previous proposal on the left, or sorry, on the right, and the current proposal on the left. At the public hearing, several commissioners present expressed support for some form of lot line windows at this facade. However, many felt that the number should be reduced. Um, in addition, some commissioners present did not find any lot line windows on this facade to be appropriate. The applicants are here to explain the changes in more detail and answer your questions. Thank you. Okay. Hi, me again, Brendan Coburn. Um, uh, who can we, should we go back to the beginning or? Who's Abdu, yeah. do you have control? Uh, does not appear so. Uh, you just need to click on the screen and then you can move around. Okay. Good. All right. Here's the first slide. Okay, great. All right, um, thank you commissioners. I am here to, uh, um, Abdu, could you mute seeing as we're sitting next to each other? Good idea. Um, we, uh, I, we, there are two things that were discussed at the uh, May 24th meeting um, as being things that required study. And uh, those two items were the, the presence of the lot line windows um, and then the, the sort of size and visibility of the bulkhead. Uh, the issue around the, the lot line windows was that they, uh, they exceeded 10% of coverage of that floor area, um, which is what the, uh, the zoning requires it to be 10% or less. Um, that was an oversight on my part that I, that I it had gotten larger than that. So um, that, that point was uh, well taken. We went back and studied that and, and reduced our number of um, lot line windows uh, down below um, 10%. Uh, so uh, we'll look at that slide in a second. The other thing that was, uh, uh, a point of concern was the um, size and visibility of the of the bulkhead. Not and none of these things seem to be too hugely controversial, but um, uh, the request was made to go study it. So, if we could go to the next slide, please, Abdu. All right, but Br Brendan, those yeah. the the restudy of the size of the bulkhead was to be done in consultation with the staff. So I think you're not presenting that today. Oh, okay. Right? I think you're just presenting the lot line windows because you're still going to work out the bulkhead with the staff. Okay, well, I'm happy to do it. If that's the case, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So then we'll pop ahead to, uh, then let's just get to that comparison slide on the side by side. So the, uh, on the, the slide on the right is the um, uh, May 24th hearing. And you can see that we had uh, four windows of equal size and then the sort of loggia opening on the right. And, um, and we uh, went back and studied it and eliminated two windows. And we, uh, we um, that's really all we did. We made the, you know, one thing that we did in terms of the composition of the facade, given that this building is quite visible um, from uh, across the, the yards and, uh, and from the street as you're, as you're walking up Congress Street to the east, was we did introduce a, a blind, uh, masonry recessed window on that left side or on the north side of that wall. Um, so this drawing is, is showing um, that blind window on the left and then the two windows uh, that we kept. And the other thing that we did was we, the, 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 the principle, of, there, was, there was an objection in the neighborhood from the windows looking into um, some particular yards and we moved the windows over so that they were out of those yards. Um, it doesn't really in some ways matter because that, that shouldn't be a concern with a lot line window. Um, but in this drawing on the left, we are showing where all those yards are and we're also showing the extent of the trees. So the reality of this uh, elevation is that these windows are now sort of pushed further back on the building, one's made blind and, the, um, and then they're all behind a sort of pretty heavily planted part of the yard. Could, could you show us where those yards are? That, I was one of those. 
yeah, so uh, those those so you can see the walls right there. So the 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 yards that we're objecting are the 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 big one to the right with the CMU wall with a funny thing there. So but that was those, all of those are private gardens, right? Yes. Yeah. The the one on the extreme right is a is a parking lot. Um, and then the ones where you see trees are the ones that are being used as gardens. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, so we could just uh, quickly flip through some of the other uh, views. Oh, okay. This is, uh, we really did these more for the bulkhead. So let's just, yeah, though they're not, keep going, Abdin. Yeah, there's no visibility from the street. Yeah, here's a little bit of visibility. So that that is the the um, revised rendering showing the there's the yeah that's a nice that's a good si side by side. So you can see how we've pushed them back and then eliminated two. Uh, so that's you know that's our request is to approve this with these two windows. I think you could go back to the original. Okay. All right. And so um, let me just, I want to make sure I'm understanding the, where we are in the process on this. So this is, um, this wasn't actually a hearing item read right into a record. This was, this has always been a public meeting item, right, right. Corey? Uh, that's correct. We had it on an agenda as a meeting item, and for lack of time, we did not do it on the day that it was. Okay. All right. All right. So there's no uh, no new testimony, but I, I will uh, double check to see if we received any letters. Hang on a sec. Okay. So we had. Um, there's a letter from a Victorian society that, um, I think this was actually for the, um, eliminate, uh, eliminating the enclosed terrace on the second floor from facade punched openings and vertical slot on the right side. I, and I'm not sure if that was actually submitted in for the revised proposal or it was an earlier one, um, but they had concerns at any rate about some of the aspects of this proposal. But again, today we're just looking at the revised scheme for the lot line windows. So we had um, um, voted, yeah. Sarah, sorry. I um, uh, One thing that you guys had asked us to do was go out and survey um, lot line window conditions similar to this in the in the district, and I did include those uh, those photos on LPC 130. And I apologize for not uh, thinking of that earlier. Um, so, okay. So if um, have to, if you could just click ahead just to show that those those things exist are are rather common within the district. Um, Okay, this uh, you can see is a, a, a collection of lot line windows um, all around the neighborhood. Um, the uh, 166 Amity is directly behind our project uh, and on and, and it looks into the the, uh, the yards of the um, DeGraw mansion that's there on the corner of Clinton and Amity Street. And that was a set of lot line windows that was approved by the commission. I don't know about it decade ago, maybe, maybe eight years, maybe less. Um, 219 Kane Street is also in the district. It's lot line windows on the side of a carriage house. I'm sure though that these windows are original to the building and that building probably once belonged to the Henry Street house. Uh, the carriage house probably belonged to the Henry Street house. Um, although interestingly, the, the carriage house that, uh, that we were proposing to build on our lot did in fact once belong to a house on Clinton Street and um, got sold off at some point. Um, so th this is just a, a, a collection of those lot line windows. Next page for a second. Um, these are some other ones uh, in the neighborhood. So you can see they're, they're really quite common. 
um, quite innocuous. And, uh, and that's that. So I guess, Abdi, you could go back to that. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you for sharing those. And so again, this was an application for um, a larger proposal and we voted to approve it with uh, this larger application for a new building. We voted to approve it with the condition that they work with the staff on the bulkhead and um, they restudy the lot line windows in consultation with the staff. So they are um, back today. They are working on the bulkhead as directed in consultation with the staff, but they did want to represent the lot line windows uh, to the commission. And so we did have um, a number of comments about them last time that ranged from no plot line windows to the lot line windows are fine and somewhere in between reducing the number so it's somewhere in between and so the proposal today is a reduced number um so commissioner chapin i think you were actually one of the commissioners who were okay with it as is um, but also <laughs> thought that they could explore something that reduced it as it looked into the neighbor's yard and so with this revised proposal and the reduced number of windows are you comfortable now uh, yes, and I also th uh, think that uh, they've uh, demonstrated that there are a number of lot line windows in the district, uh, some of which the commission approved. So uh, I'm fine with this. Okay, great. And um, Commissioner Leffy, you also were okay with the idea of some window on the lot line, but felt that they should reduce the number. And with the reduction today and the other examples, how are you feeling? Commissioner Luffy. Jeannie, are you there? Yeah, sorry, I'm on a different computer. It's okay. Been um, so I like the fact that they reduced the number and they set them back. Um, and I, uh, I think I can approve this. Okay. All right, and um, were, were, uh, let me see. I think Commissioner Chen, you were. Um, we had questions about whether they were allowed here, um, and felt that there should be some reduction to take the neighbor into account. Are you comfortable now? Yeah, I'm glad they did, and uh, I, uh, it's approval. Okay, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Gust uh, Gustafson. I think you did not actually comment on the lot line windows the last time we saw this. So I, I cannot imagine that I commented on the lot line. <laughs> so I, I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay. And uh, Commissioner Goldblum, you didn't comment on the lot line windows either. I think you were focusing on other aspects of the new building. Good. <laughs> okay. All right, and then uh, Vice Chair Bland, you I think were less, much less comfortable with the, any idea of lot line. Yeah, I was much less comfortable because I know the story intimately of uh, how the owner of the DeGraw Mansion erupted in outrage by the nine windows or more that were being proposed at staff level approval um, by a very famous singer whose name I will not say. Um, <laughs> It's anyway. It was an interesting story, but it was a it was a reason. It, it seemed reasonable um, to have all these new windows that had never been there before invading the garden, the private garden that had been there for 150 years. <clears throat> That's why I erupted. <laughs> That's why I was so uncomfortable, and I still am. Um, but I think you have the votes, and um, and at least they've made a reduction in the number and. Um, I think it's it's going to move forward now. Yeah. Okay. And Commissioner Jefferson, I I think I was always comfortable. Okay. I think you weren't as comfortable, but if you are now, that's fine. Oh, I am now. I am now. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. So I do think we have the votes to move forward with this. Um, so Commissioner uh, Chapin, would you make the motion? Sure, thank you. Um, in the matter of a certificate appropriateness, Borough of Brooklyn, LPC 
12096-193-195 Congress Street, Cobble Hill Historic District, an Italianate style row house with Neo Greek uh, details built in 1872 in an adjacent yard. Application is to amend a previously approved proposal to construct a new building. Um, I note that the style scale materials and details of 195 Congress Street are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Cobble Hill Historic District. I also note that the site of 193 Congress Street featured a 19th century carriage house located at the rear of the lot in a garage built circa 1929 in front of the carriage house, that the carriage house and garage were demolished down to the first floor lot line walls about 2012 to 2013. And the commission recently approved a new building on the site of the former gar garage where presently only a fir first floor lot nine windows, only the first floor lot nine windows exist. I recommend approval finding that the work will not da damage or eliminate any significant features of the site streetscape or the adjacent building. That lot nine windows on visible secondary facades are commonly found at buildings at the end of a row. Therefore, the presence of a limited number of windows at the west facade will not call undue attention to themselves or diminish the secondary character of the wall. That the punched uh, openings of the lot line windows will be in keeping with the size and shape of typical lot line windows at row houses within the historic district and will maintain their residential scale. That the lot line, win wall, light line wall is set back more than 30 feet from the rear facade of the neighboring building. Therefore, the presence of windows will not inordinately encroach on the privacy of any individual neighboring house, and that the work will not detract from the special architectural and historic character of the historic district. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Gustafson, would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? A weak aye. <laughs> but an aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. Eight in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. All right, thank you. That's approved and we'll move to the next public meeting. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, next is public meeting item number two, LPC 22-07982, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1392, lot 57, 1002 Madison Avenue, the Upper East Side Historic District. This is a neo-federal style bank building built in 1930. The application is to replace entrance and fill and screen the windows. This is last presented at the public hearing of June 28th, 2022, and no action was taken at that time. Um, <clears throat> staff will be uh, walking through the revisions made to the presentation, um, and if there are questions, the applicants are available. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Marcello Pacheco, preservation staff. Uh, the item before you is 1002 Madison Avenue, located in the Upper East Side Historic District. At the public hearing of June 28th, 2022, the commission reviewed a proposal to replace entrance infill and install signage and window treatments. No action was taken at that time and the applicants were asked to restudy the entrance infill and signage. There were no concerns expressed with regards to the proposed window treatments. As background, oops, sorry. As background, here we see the original building conditions on the left, consisting of a central window assembly and a side entrance. On the right, we see the existing altered conditions where the central bay was changed to an entrance and the side entrance revised to a window, all prior to designation. And here are more existing condition photographs on the left and an existing condition in elevation, as well as on this sheet. On the right is the proposal, the proposed design that was shown at the public hearing of June 28th. On the left is the new proposal. 
most commissioners supported the installation of a modern entry door assembly for added transparency and utility, but expressed concerns regarding the proposed frameless glass entry door, single light transom assembly, and stainless steel finish. These commissioners felt that the design introduced large expanses of glass that were too minimal and detracted from the overall com composition of the neo-federal facade and that the proposed stainless steel finish looked out of place. Furthermore, most commissioners suggested that while modern entry infill could be found appropriate, they requested that the applicants explore either retaining some of the existing fabric or that elements of the original historic details, proportions, and finish be recalled in the new assembly. Here are the details of the original proposal. And here is the current proposal. In response to the commissioner comments, the applicants have revised the proposal as follows. The frame of the paired entry door has been widened and the bottom rail enlarged to align with the historic stone base of the building. The transom bar has been enlarged to match the height and location of the historic original transom bar and a recessed profile has been added. The transom assembly has been revised to a multi-light assembly featuring mullions that recall the proportions and configuration of the historical of the historic original fan light assembly. And lastly, the, fin the finish of the proposed assembly has been revised from stainless steel to a white finish to better harmonize with the existing elements of the facade. With regards to the signage, some commissioners expressed concern about the location and finish, requesting that the applicants explore alternatives. In response to the commissioner's concerns, the applicants have provided further information about previous commission approvals for signage at this building to show precedent in support of the current proposal. Shown on these two slides are examples of approvals from the late 1990s. Um, going back a bit, this image shows a recent photo showing signage approved by the commission in one of those 1999 permits. Additionally, the finish of the proposed signage letters has been revised from stainless steel to white. This rendering shows the revised proposal showing the changes and the applicants are available to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Marcello. Okay, commissioners, do we have any questions uh, for Marcello or for the applicant? All right, I'm not seeing any questions, so I think we can move right to our discussion. All right. Um, and so, as Marcello said, the last time we looked at this, um, we felt that um, while the, the existing door and, and side lights and fan light were not historic, that there should be um, a proposed door that does reflect the style of the building. And I think we specifically talked about doing modern doors, but restoring the transom bar line and doing fan light and rethinking the finish. And so the applicant has um, addressed each of those areas of concern. Um, so let's have our discussion. Commissioner Goldblum, I think you were specifically um, led the conversation um, asking for the transom bar to be in its original place and um, uh, you know, being open to modern doors, but not with a stainless steel finish. Do you think you were fine with the signs? Um, I, I think that this is an improvement. I think that the um, transom bar being uh, thickened up and aligning with the, uh, the stone uh, uh, details under the arch is an improvement. Um, I think it's unfortunate that they couldn't actually reuse the existing transom. Uh, and I would certainly encourage them to do that. And I mean, looking at it again and thinking about it, I personally, I, I, I think I was convinced by others who had concerns about the signage. I would suggest the signage would be more appropriate in that new transom bar or as a plaque to the left of the door opposite the, the street number. Okay. okay, thank you. Commissioner Chen. Yeah, once again, Commissioner Goldblum um, nailed it. I think that, that those are excellent recommendations. Okay. All right. And Commissioner Leffey? Um, I think this is an improvement. And um, 
I think that Michael's recommendations are good ones, although I could accept the, uh, the signage where it is. I think it also would look nice uh, either in the transom or up to the side. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Jefferson? Um, <clears throat> much improved. I think uh, Michael's suggestion of this sign is a good one, and I would go with that. Be okay. looking at the transom. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Gustafson? Um, agree and agree. Okay. And Commissioner Chapin? Uh, I actually could have uh, approved it as presented. Um, and I think the changing the color of the sign was good because uh, it relates to the actual to the gallery name also. But uh, I can... I can also approve it, to, you know, with uh, Michael's suggestions because it looks like that's what we have a majority for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I, I do recognize some of you are, are comfortable with the signage, but I think the majority um, agree with Commissioner Goldblum about um, either lowering the sign into the transom bar or as a plaque. So, Commissioner Goldblum, would you make a motion to approve um, the proposal with the condition that they work with the staff to lower the sign um, to either one of those locations? Regarding 1002 Madison Avenue in the Upper East Side Historic District, the application is to replace entrance and fill and screen the windows. Uh, I note the building style, scale, materials, details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Upper East Side Historic District. I further note that the Upper East Side Historic District designation report identifies Madison Avenue as a unique commercial thoroughfare that has responded successfully to changing needs and uses over time, and that a master plan for storefront changes was established to ensure the continued presence of stylish storefronts undergoing regular change, keep up with contemporary design trends, that the building was omitted from the master plan due to its typology as a bank building, that the entrance bay was altered prior to the to a door. I recommend approval with modifications, finding that the existing entrance and surround are not original, therefore their removal will not eliminate or damage any significant architectural features, that the new modern entrance infill consisting of paired metal doors and metal and glass doors and arched fan light will reinforce the commercial character of Madison Avenue and be in keeping with contemporary storefront infill found throughout the district at the proposed fan light. Will match the historic original fan light in terms of size, proportions, and placement. Will be evocative of the original ornament. That the profile of the transom bar <clears throat> will recall the size and placement of the historic original transom bar. That the composition of the new entrance infill, featuring a transom bar and lower door rails that align with the historic stone features, will support and harmonize with the proportions of the significant architectural pieces of the building. The proposed off-white finish will match the finish of the historic windows, window, and, uh, window and door assemblies that the white fabric window treatments will be set back slightly from windows and mimic the appearance of translucent window shades, thereby maintaining a level of depth and transparency into the building. That historic and recent photographic documents, signage, that, excuse me, that historic and recent photographs, document signage installed above the modified entrance door. You know what, let's skip that one. Uh, that the white painted signage letters will be simply designed and installed in an area to be indicated below. And that the proposed work will not detract from the historic and architectural character of the building or upper side historic district. However, the applicant will work with staff on relocating the signage either to the new transom bar or to a plaque to the left of the door. Okay, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Chapin, would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. With seven in favor, none opposed, the motion passes. That's approved. With those conditions, please continue to work with the staff and we'll move to the next public meeting item. Okay, and this is also the last uh, item of the day, public meeting item number three, LPC 22-11131. An application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 633, lot 10, 332 West 11th Street in the Greenwich Village Historic District. So, <coughs> a garage building designed by Thomas Stiles and built in 1905. And the application is to alter the ground floor of the front facade, replace windows, demolish the back of the building, and 
rear facade uh, and construct rooftop additions. Last presented at the public hearing of June 28th, 2022. No action was taken at that time. And I believe we need to open the proceedings to allow the applicants to present. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Jefferson, would you make a motion to open the proceedings? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Goldblum, uh, Goldblum would you second that motion? Let's go with Commissioner Gustafson. Would you second that motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. The proceed the applicant may speak after the staff introduces it. Um, right. The uh, applicants have control of the screen. So just click on the slide and introduce yourself to begin. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Ward Dennis with Higgins Quays Barth and Partners. Uh, I'm joined by Michael Gilmore and Brandon Benzing of Little Gilmore Architects, uh, who I believe are controlling the screen. <sighs> there we go. Thank you. Um, if you could go to the next slide, uh, just uh, reference uh, the Project 332 West 11th Street. We're at the west side of the Greenwich Village Historic District. Uh, between Washington and Greenwich Streets. Uh, you can see the building on the right. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Uh, as Corey mentioned, it was constructed in 1905, designed by Thomas Stiles. It was originally used uh, as a stable uh, garage for a um, ice company, the Foster Ice Company. And you can note in the text photo on the far left, uh, that related to the ice company, there was a large rooftop structure at, uh, at the sixth floor of the building. Um, uh, in 1928, it was converted to a garage. Uh, and at that time, we believe that one of the cast iron piers at the left side of the building was removed, resulting in the existing asymmetrical ground floor uh, condition. You will see in the tax photo on the right, uh, which is pretty close to current conditions, uh, that the windows have been blocked in uh, and that the cornice is missing. There are also a number of violations for signage on the building. Uh, all of this will be restored and removed at staff level. Next, please. Uh, at the public hearing in June, the commissioners were generally very supportive of the proposed rooftop addition. Uh, which consists of a sixth floor addition and uh, stair elevator bulkheads above with a small uh, penthouse uh, tucked between the two uh, bulkheads. Uh, I think the commissioners felt that the uh, a designed and visible uh, rooftop addition on this building was appropriate, but we were asked to study the height and uh, material of the bulkheads in particular. Uh, the commissioners uh, had uh, mixed opinions about the ground floor uh, at the base um, and uh, asked us to restudy a proposal to make uh, the fifth floor window single light windows. So at the base of the building, we have uh, made some modifications to materials and color, which bring the uh, whole proposal, I think, much more in line with existing storefront conditions on the block. We've also added uh, some small bumpers uh, that are existing and we are retaining them at the garage entry. Uh, the fifth floor windows uh, we are doing at staff level. They're now multi-light windows retaining uh, the fan lights, new wood windows. Uh, so those are fully restorative and can be reviewed at staff level. And then at the rooftop, we have lowered the elevator bulkhead, which is the mass in the center of the building, and the stair bulkhead at the left of the building, uh, as well as the penthouse. Uh, we've also changed the massing slightly so that they're a bit less monolithic, and we have changed the material so that the brick matches the uh, color of the brick on the side elevation of the building. Uh, so I think you will agree, and we think that this is a much improved project as a result of these changes. And next, please. At the rear of the building, we have changed the design of the rear facade. We are proposing to remove a section of the rear of the building to create light and air. Uh, we have revised the materials to a lighter color palette uh, with darker windows so that these read and are much more like punched openings. and. We have made the fenestration at the rear of the building much more regular by 
uh, keeping the vertical mullions throughout. And again, you can see the changes at the rooftop. Next, please. Uh, so this is an axonometric view showing again those changes. Uh, very quickly, the elevator override at the center was lowered by four feet. Uh, the egress stair at the left was lowered by two feet, 10 inches. And the uh, penthouse, which is the glass element in the middle was lowered by another eight inches. Uh, the floor to ceiling heights within the penthouse have always been very low. Uh, and then we have changed the brick color so that it is more compatible in color uh, and texture with the side elevation, the common brick at the side elevation of the building. Uh, next, please. Uh, there was a question uh, from one of the commissioners about uh, where was our proposal creating the tallest building on our block. Uh, I think we showed some of that last time, but we've documented it more carefully here. Uh, this is looking at building heights uh, in our block and the neighboring blocks. Uh, the heights called out in red are taller than what we propose. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that includes the height at 131 Perry, which is the building immediately to the south of us, uh, which is the tallest building on the block and will continue to be the tallest building on the block. Uh, we are also lower than the height of 341 West 11th, which is across the street from us. Uh, both 341 West 11th and 131 Perry have approved uh, rooftop additions uh, by the commission. Uh, you can also see from some of the other heights of buildings that are slightly lower than us that we are still uh, well within the general range of building heights on these blocks. And of course, this block has, and, and the neighboring blocks have a lot of much larger industrial scale buildings, very typical of the West Village. Next, please. And you can see some of that context of the neighborhood here with taller buildings looking into shorter build, uh, shorter buildings looking over shorter buildings, uh, rooftop additions such as at the top left and the bottom right. Uh, next, please. Uh, and again, this is 131 Perry, which is our neighbor immediately to the south. Uh, the commission here did approve a much more visible uh, rooftop addition. Uh, some years ago, it is taller than what we are proposing and much more visible than what we are proposing. Next, please. Uh, and then just in terms of appropriateness, I will note that the wet, this part of the West Village is much more uh, like uh, uh, Gansvort, Tribeca, and Dumbo industrial districts where the commission has taken a different approach to visible rooftop additions as at 131 Perry on the left and bottom left at 771 Washington Street, uh, but also at uh, projects uh, such as uh, 22 Little West 12th in Gansford, Fisher Mills in Tribeca or 185 Plymouth in Dumbo. All of these have uh, designed rooftop additions that are visible. Uh, also of note, 185 Plymouth and Fisher Mills both included substantial removals at the rear or center of the building and the creation of very contemporary glassy new rear walls. Next, please. Uh, so uh, Michael, uh, Michael Gilmore can go through uh, quickly the rest of the uh, changes and particularly the material changes. Thanks, Ward. Uh, this is a view from the south looking north. You can see the rear facade uh, where we've changed the material and created more of a punched opening effect there. And you can see uh, the significant reductions to the rooftop bulkheads um, with the elevator. Uh, we worked with an elevator consultant to study quite a few different options of what, to, the, what we could do to bring it down. And while it'll be a slower elevator, less desirable for our client, it does reduce it by four feet. And as you'll see in a few minutes in the visibility studies, that makes a tremendous a difference in the, in the visibility from the street. Uh, the stair bulkhead dropped down 34 inches. We previously had the height of it tied to the height of the penthouse. And by dropping it down, it, it, it uh, created a staggered massing, which some people suggested that we look at, as well as uh, the materiality on the brick, which you'll see on the next page. You'll see here, they're a little closer. On the left slide, we were 
we did not denote the brick very accurately to what it is. The right slide, which we're proposing now, is actually the way the brick looks. And we changed it so that you could see that more easily before it was more diagrammatic. Uh, this was the proposed brick in the middle, uh, which was much lighter and whiter. And our other materials have also adjusted a little bit. Here you can see the proposed brick for the bulkheads where we're picking up the browns and reds from the east and west elevations. Uh, also, when we repoint the side elevations, the grouting will be much similar, more similar on those two. From the visibility studies, you'll see the uh, significant changes to the roof massing uh, show up. First from uh, the west side of Washington, looking east, southeast, uh, you can see on the left our proposal from June and on the right, the significantly lowered elevator bulkhead uh, and also in the back, the penthouse, by dropping it even eight inches made quite a difference and is nearly invisible there. There's one more, next slide is a little bit uh, further west on 11th. Again, the material change, not only is it, we feel more harmonious with the building now, but also with the neighborhood. This is from Perry Street, uh, directly behind us. You can see the building that Ward mentioned a couple of times in, at the top right, and our building uh, just over these garages. So the elevator bulkhead has pretty much disappeared and a little tiny bit of the uh, rear penthouse is, is available is visible now. From the Northeast side of 11th Street, uh, looking westward, you can see this is the actual brick that exists on the side elevations and where we've rendered in something that's much more complementary to that. And also you can see significant reduction in the mass of the elevator override and the stair bulkhead here. This is just a little bit further down the street, same, same situation. Um, the elevator bulkhead is pretty much disappeared, it's okay. Along Greenwich, there's one small window between buildings where you can see our building through the slot. Uh, this was our proposal in June. It doesn't change a lot, but on the far right hand side of this, the elevator, I'm sorry, the stair bulkhead being matching more in tune with the, the brick of the neighborhood and also lowered by 34 inches, which is quite helpful. This is one more slide, just shifted a few feet from that one. So you can see the elevator override in the distance and the stair bulkhead in front of it. And that being significantly reduced here as well. From the corner of 11th and Greenwich, it's uh, basically no, no visible changes. The rear facade, uh, which we're already covered, we, we, we basically, in looking at some of the symmetry of not only Thomas Stiles, but some of the other buildings in the neighborhood, which we'll show in a minute, we, we went more symmetrical. We eliminated some of these uh, windows that were shifting off of the grid, and we changed the materiality to be more harmonious with the rest of the building and the color scheme of the rest of the building while keeping the windows dark and letting them be a little bit more of a punched opening. And you can see the, the, the jogs, the different heights where we've reduced the four feet and the 31 inches on that side. These are some of the, well, for the front facade at the ground floor, which ours is on the right, the existing condition of, uh, at the recommendation of some of the commissioners, we went back and looked at some additional um, facades, uh, not only of Thomas Stiles, which is up on the top here, very symmetrical, but also several in the West Village in our neighborhood, also all symmetrical. And also as one of the commissioners suggested that the paint scheme should be more consistent as you, and you can see on most of these, very, very consistent. Also, these are all on our block on 11th Street. Uh, most of them are darker in nature. We actually have toned it back a little bit from some of them, but they tend to be very consistent in their color with the exception of doors generally have, a, uh, there's a lot of wood doors on the street, which was what we were proposing previously and are still proposing. So uh, this is our new proposal, which I think it's maybe perhaps easier to see on the, on the rendering. On the left was our June proposal. We've lightened up the color scheme 
a, a hair and we've taken out the two-tone nature. We originally had the entryways uh, with a with a bronze and we've kept that consistent. And you can see we've also um, retained the bumpers at the garage door to demarcate that as a unique thing. And I think, um, I, I think all of the items that we've studied and changed have made a, a large impact, uh, really reduced the visibility and improved the design. And I hope you'll agree. Thank you. Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicants? All right, I'm not seeing any questions. So, um, What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to send you all requests to unmute so that we can begin our discussion. Okay. And um, so the last time we saw this as was presented, there were um, sort of four areas of work, the ground floor, the windows at the top floor, um, where they were moving the historic uh, transom, fan light transoms, the rooftop addition and the bulkheads, and then cutting back the rear facade and a new articulation for the rear facade to create light and air. And um, and we had a number of comments. The applicants have addressed those comments in, in this revised scheme. And so we'll have a discussion to see where we are. So Commissioner Gustafson, um, I think the last time we saw this, you felt actually the rooftop addition itself was relatively modest, but a bit too visible and that they should look at reducing the visibility. Um, I think you were comfortable with the rear, felt strongly about keeping the fan lights, which they are doing now and that will be staff level. So have the reductions at the rooftop addition addressed your concerns? Um, I think they have. I, I'm. Uh... Um, and even the changes they made, actually, that I had not focused on, I, I appreciate on the on the rear facade, for example. But the uh, yeah, I think they've you know they they've cut it down you know three or four feet, and that's that's pretty significant. So um, I'm okay with it. Okay, great, thank you. And Commissioner Jefferson, you particularly commented on reducing the height of the elevator bulkhead and keeping <coughs> the fan lights, and they're doing both of those things. So has, has this addressed it for you? Yeah, this is much improved. Um, the only issue I have is that the two colors are still very visible. Uh, from uh, from the from page nineteen, if there was one color, a background color, just uh, it would be even less visible. But I can I page okay. nineteen. Here, you see where you have the dark brown against the light brown. So it's the metal against the brick. Right, right. If there was just one color, it would be fine. I mean, I think they did a, a great job except for the color. Okay. All right. Um, and Commissioner Chapin, I think last time you also felt that they should keep the fan lights. You were comfortable with the rear but also ask them to reduce the visibility of the rooftop addition and in particular to go to a red brick to match the building. Have this, has this addressed your concerns? Yes, it, it did actually. So I, I actually can approve it as presented. Okay, thanks. All right, and um, Commissioner Lucky, you had similar comments about the height and visibility of the addition. Um, you also suggested a lighter color at the base, which they've also done. Mm -hmm. So has, has this addressed your concerns? Yeah, I think they've done a, a good job. I can, uh, I can approve this. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and I think Commissioner Chen, you also wanted to see uh, the, the red brick at the rooftop addition um, and sort of agreed with other commissioners about the visibility. So has it, has this- Yeah, which they did. And I, I think at a great cost to them because uh, uh, no one wants to wait for a longer elevator ride. And so uh, that, that I, I can understand the pain, but I'm glad they responded to the commissioner's concerns. Okay. All right, thanks. And Commissioner Goldblum, I think you also commented mostly on the bulkheads at the roof um, and as well as the color of the brick. And, but you also had concerns about um, the pilaster at the ground floor, which is being shifted and the shutters, which are not uh, completely addressed here. So. I, 
I'm, I, I, I agree with everyone else. The, the improvements made are significant and the change of the color and the brick is very, very important to how the building kind of sits in its context. Uh, and it's in generally, uh, generally a success, I think. Um, I, I could approve this except for the central column, which both Michael Bevincher and I felt was an important feature of the particular design of this building. If you look at the center pier, it's a, it's a very unusual classical building where it's got a solid center pier that culminated in a column in the center. Uh, that column was apparently there for the entire history of the building, and it seems like the design of the building um, is uh, designed around that. So I would strongly suggest that they keep that center pier. I have no other comments on the building. I think All back's right. fine. And uh, I also think that they've really addressed many of the comments. And I think that the changing of the brick color really helps the addition to recede from view, reducing it eliminates some views of it altogether. And where you do see it, it now sits quietly within the roofscape. Um, and I, like other commissioners, I'd be comfortable with the shifting of the column. I think it's something that we've done elsewhere in Tribeca, for example, where we have very regular rhythms of pilasters and we've allowed them to shift them in order to accommodate new entrances for new uses. So I think um, I, I understand your concerns, Commissioner Goldblum, but I think we might have six to approve it as is, as long as they continue to work with study, uh, study that color uh, in response to Commissioner Jefferson's comment, working with the staff to just help the two parts of the addition um, blend together a little bit more. So I think we can do this. Commissioner Gustafson, would, would you feel comfortable making a motion to approve it with the condition they continue to work with the staff to refine the colors of the brick and the metal at the rooftop addition? Yes. And we'll see where we are. Okay. Uh, the matter of LPC 22-11131, 332 West 11th Street in the Greenwich Village Historic District. The application is to alter the ground floor of the front facade, replace windows, demolish the back of the building, and construct a new rear facade and construct rooftop additions. I note that the building scale, style, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of this Greenwich Village Historic District. I recommend approval, finding that the proposed work will not eliminate any significant architectural features, that the design configuration and materials of the proposed ground floor infill featuring gray painted wood and metal display windows and doors, panel bulkheads and metal garage doors and service entrance panels will be consistent with other modern infill on buildings of this type and age. That relocating the existing cast iron pier to frame the new residential entrance infill will maintain this historic feature and align with the rhythm of the brick piers at the upper floors of the facade that the work at the rear facade will not be visible from public thoroughfares, that the removal of the entire rear facade for the creation of a rear yard will be consistent with the history of changes to garage buildings within this district as they were adapted for new uses over time and will support the adaptive reuse of this structure to meet the modern requirements for light and air that the design of the proposed rear facade featuring salvaged outer brick piers, large glazed openings at the lower floors and smaller punched openings at the upper floors with beige painted multi multi-light metal windows and doors, metal spandrels and louvered piers will be in keeping with the scale and character of this building and other rear facades within the block, that the proposed rooftop additions will not be seen over the primary facade from directly across the street, that views of the additions will be consistent with the character of typical roofscapes within this historic district, which historically featured a variety of visible rooftop accretions, uh, that the neutral painted metal and red brick cladding of the rooftop additions and bulkheads will be typical of rooftop structures in this portion of the historic district would not detract from the architectural character of the primary facade, subject to one note below, that the massing of the additions will be set up back from the primary facade and will not overwhelm the large scale of this garage and warehouse building, and that the work will not detract from the historic and architectural character of the Greenwich Village Historic District, and uh, recommend that the applicant work with staff um, to, to uh, harmonize the, the two colors on the roofing, um, on the additions on the roof. Great, thank you. And Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second. All right, Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. No. Is that no? I'm sorry? No. Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. 
Aye. With six in favor and one opposed, the motion passed. All right, so that's approved with that final refinement. Please continue to work with the staff. And that concludes our day today. We had a very long day starting at 9 a.m. So I wanna thank everybody for participating today and especially commissioners, I'd like to thank you for your hard work today and, and every week as we review um, proposals and applications. So thank you for your commitment and dedication. And this will be our final hearing for the summer. And we will resume our ske hearing schedules again on September 13th. So we'll see you all in about a month. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the summer. Enjoy the yeah, rest of the summer, everyone. Too. Thanks. And thank, thank you, everybody.